All right, let's let's begin the let's begin the session anyway, and then we'll just go from there. I mean, if we have to improv a catch up, that's what we have to do, right? Okay, so we are here with the defense of the group. Uh, Chester Decker being the lawyer, we are currently in court session, about to begin. But does anyone want to do a catch up of last session, or are we going to jump straight into the courts? Okay, uh, I'll start. All right, so. Laneros led you to the city, Totemic Falls, and you walked across the Autumn and Spring Heroes, the bridge that connects uh, the wildlands, basically, of the Feywild over to the city. And then you took a lift down into the city itself. Anyone? Zerxil? Zerxil bought some drugs as the rest of you uh, <laughs> so oh, yeah, went to the reception to see if you could schedule a meeting with the Fey Father, I believe, and it was like, basically, get out of here. The receptionist said that you uh, could basically just get a meeting with him. No, and... we didn't want to meet with the Fey Father. we wanted to meet with one of his sons. We weren't so yeah. stupid then. We became so stupid at the end of the session, but that, at that point we weren't that stupid yet. Um, Zerxo went on a little bit of a fly around when he went ethereal and found the Marsh Mansions where he met Leandra Moonlight, a Archfey or, or Demigod inside a mansion that only Demigods and Archfey can see. And it turns out that Xerxo can see this mansion because of course he is on his way to being a Demigod. Uh, when he brought the rest of the players there later, they, they couldn't see the mansion, but they did indeed uh, meet Leandra Moonlight later on. They, there was a bit of shopping to be had. Uh, the group went about uh, meeting some of the denizens of Totemic Falls uh, after Laniros was like, I'm heading home to, me to talk to my family and get some downtime. Um, after talking around, uh, Chester found a poster with him uh, starring in a play called The Tale of yeah. Two Spears. And it, even though it was an obvious trap, he went straight in there alone, telling everyone that he didn't want them to come with him. And ended up coming across one of the Fey Father's agents, a Rakshasa, pretending to be him. A fight ensued where the Rakshasa was unable to dominate Chester after several attempts because Chester just passes all of his saving throws. Uh, you ended up blasting him away. You were like, bang, bang, and then I started blasting. And you fight him, <laughs> disintegrates at him, and he tried to run away. And he did manage to get away after turning invisible. You could Leaving... say their fight was a tale of two spears. You you could say that, yeah. The group met back up and everyone met Leandra Moonlight, upon which she said you could, with her help, petition to meet the Fey Father and present your case and maybe then you'll be forgiven for your crimes and be allowed to go home, basically get the permission from the Fey Father then and there to go back to your the material plane, back to home. Uh, everyone agreed that this would be the best, and she put in a petition for you guys, which was answered within an hour, and we found out that time passes in Totemic Falls by the Fey Father's visits, and you learnt that in a previous time, in an era, the Fey Father had consumed another deity of the moon, and therefore had taken the mantle upon himself. And as the sun set in Totemic Falls, and a full moon rose, you realise this is how the days pass. When the Fae Father visits, the moon is full in the sky and the city falls into night. When it, and that meant that you guys were meant to head to court. And you guys head to court where you met Gehovel again, uh, one of um, the Fae Father's sons. Upon which he remarked that your battle was fun and that, you know, he lost but no hard feelings. And gave you all a horn of ale or mead before we get into the court, because he said no one in his court will go without a drink. And upon entering the court, it was like a party. Uh, to your left and right, flanking you were Eladrin and denizens of Totemic Falls, going about a usual, basically party-like atmosphere, chatting, uh, talking, drinking at tables. Lineros immediately joined his sister on the on the right of the room. Uh, uh, I kept fucking up her pronunciation, but I think it's Valalerone. Oh, Val. We're going to call her Val for sure, because it's easier to say. And as you guys were arranged in front of the throne, a crystalline throne, the Fey Father entered from the door behind you, a tall, furbolg, muscular, covered in tattoos, bare-chested with a large storm giant's belt around his, uh, like used as a girdle, with a kind of rough-spun bare trousers, covered in tattoos, 
a blindfold around his eyes and great stag horns that protrude from his forehead. He stands at least seven foot tall, not including his antlers. And he bypassed you all and stood up onto the throne. Upon where his son whispered something to his ears, he sat down onto the throne, watched you all, even without eyes, and that's where we ended the session. That was a um, marvellous catch up. Thank you, I, I, did, I did try. So we all get inspiration, yeah? Yeah. No, I get to take four inspiration. And then level up. I feel like we should level up for what we did last session. We, yeah. we killed an immortal carp, so... You did indeed kill an immortal carp. Well, mm. Xerxil did. Yeah, but Xerxil is just an extension of our party's collective will, so... And morals. Co collected malevolence. Yeah. Mm. Alright. So, as you all stand before you, staring up at this uh, Fae Father figure, he doesn't seem to move or say anything. And then his son slams the end of his spear onto the crystalline fall floor, and it echoes out. Next to you, Lanieros, your sister leans in and goes, I'm glad you could make it in time. This is going to be a show, I believe. Yes, I believe so. They're quite uh, an interesting bunch. Yeah, I heard. Been with them for a while. Well, my intelligence tells me that you were uh, riding with them, so to speak, Linus. Yes, in a way, I did not approve of all of their actions, and certainly made this clear to them. Mm. Uh, but, your sister uh, currently in a currently in a spring mood sits at a seat, begins drinking, and says, "Well, I'm on." Well, I'm on duty this night, so. Uh, Todd. Sorry, my bad. Carry on. <laughs> I just, I just. It's alright. Uh, he says, she says. It seems he's in a generous mood. I mean, he hasn't struck them down on the spot yet. Yes, um. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Perhaps mm -hmm. he did pick up some diplomacy after all. Perhaps not. Oh, I would have the job of gathering most of the information. Well, did you need any information from my side? You could have asked. Yeah, but you weren't here. No, That's but fair. I am now. I know you were visit visiting the Mother of the Dawn, and all, but <clears throat> it's a bit of a arse ache. He put, she nods over towards her aching heart, the uh, general of the Fae Father's kind of militia. Mm -hmm. he says, apparently he's got beef against them as well, is going to raise some sort of uh, issue. So uh, they may be unaware of that. Generally, assume them to be unaware of most things, yes. Aching heart seemed to have a problem with that bugbear. I see. Well, she reaches for the golden pitcher and pours you another drink and says, sit back and enjoy. Yes, I'm not quite sure if that's the word. I don't like it when diplomacy fails, but let's see what happens. All right, so at that moment, the Fae Father makes a gesture with his hand to his son, just kind of like points towards the ceiling, and uh, Gehor turns to him, nods, and walks across, says, Ladies! Gentlemen and fake creatures of the court, welcome. Everyone, make sure your drinks are full. And then he walks to the other side. This court is in session because here before us we have denizens of the material plane that have committed crimes against my father, the Fae Father. And then he walks to the other side. They will now get a chance to defend themselves against the crimes they have been accused of. And you know the way it goes. And everyone nods. There's some uh, polite clapping. And then he sent he centers himself just before his father, just so that you can see his father above him. He says, You have been accused of killing the cleric Otho Houseworth in cold blood. And you have been accused of killing the Fay Father's agents on the material plane. Aching Heart and this troll to your left, this large troll with a big green beard, walks over to the balcony, puts his hands on the balustrade and says, Yes, that one there, and then that one there, and he points towards Macron and Chester, 
went about and killed four of my agents in the material plane. Trolls that were gathering intelligence around Phoebo. I believe that one drowned them. Points towards Macra. <laughs> Macra doesn't even seem to remember doing it. Like, <laughs> Oh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I know he did. They were simply set to gather information, hunt for some food, and bring it back. But they were cut down. And uh, Gehor nods. Thank you, Aching Heart. Now, which one of you would like to defend the group, or are you taking individual defences? Chester, at this point, does clear his throat. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm willing to take this one, if you'll let me prove it. Of course, step forward, Mr. Decker. Oh, no, he was the, he was like whispering to Elzef and Macra and Zerxil. Um, I am okay. not even involved in this one, and neither is Master Zerxil or Master Decker. And I don't think Master Macra is uh, all there today. Shh, shh, shh. You're going to be pivotal to this defense, so I uh, I might need you on side. To the trolls, I I think they're going through issues one by one, Master Decker. Ah. Well, I'm fucked on this one, but I can do the next one. Well, you are involved in this one, Master Decker, so you should really take this one. Well, okay, fine, fine. I can do it. <clears throat> Good uh, creatures of the court, the Fey Father himself, just, wise, all-knowing. You are all-knowing, right? There is a nod from Gehor, but the Fey Father makes no movement. Excellent. Excellent. All information is important here, you see. Uh, I would prefer to uh, present my defense as a holistic approach. Chester, Chester bends over and he, oh, he pulls out his diplomat's pack and he gets his jacket out and he puts it on and he spritzes himself with some perfume. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, creatures, LZ, Xerxil, uh, and others, I wish to approach this in a pragmatic way. You see, I am unfamiliar with your ways, but you seem quite familiar with ours, and I will base my defence upon those upstanding principles. My friend here, Elzef of Sea's End, very literal. Uh, do you notice anything about her? Um, Get horse nods. She is the <laughs> other half of my adopted sister. And if you would, uh, permit me to ask a question of your customs, because I am a little bit of a loss, but if someone is wronged, rightfully, by the laws of your people, how should they respond to such an injustice? Petition to the courts. Ah, excellent. And the courts decide the fate. In the city they the do, yes. father himself decides the fate. The fate, my father, will interrupt or interject as he sees fit of course, of course. He is all-knowing, as you've already uh, outlined. Uh, completely above the approach. So, I'd like to focus, if I may, on the apparent death of one of your own. Uh, my friend Elzef here spent quite a considerable amount of time uh, in a business arrangement. Uh, may I call her to the stand? You may call whoever you like. I call a witness, Elzef! Of season. I would like to, before I give my statement, say that I do not know why we've gone onto this topic now instead of the the first matter presented. But I will uh, humour Master Decker. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here on side with me. Uh, good to have you here today. Uh, did you or did you not, Elzef, uh, agree to create a portal uh, for one? Uh, Chester pulls out a piece of paper with nothing written on it and pretends to read it. Uh, Otto. Halsworth. Yes, uh, I was commissioned to do so, and I have done so. Excellent. Uh, good. Uh, were there signed papers uh, outlining this business arrangement? Contractually, of course. Uh, I mean, Elsa always carries around the contract because she still wasn't paid, so she just, like, holds that up. Good, good, good. Uh, fees due for this? Were they given to you in a due and uh, prompt manner? No, they're still outstanding. Ah, right, of course. Uh, considering a race of people who are quite, uh, you know, 
uh, specific when it comes to their dealings. It seems a little odd, does it not, that you were not paid for this transaction? Um, it, it seemed odd even with just Lord Halsworth in the picture. Now that I know that Faye are involved, uh, it actually seems slightly less odd. But uh, it is still uh, unusual as the shops in this town appear to take money for goods and uh, my goods were taken without money. <laughs> Absolutely, and if you were to take something, say, a golden apple that bestowed immortality without paying for it, you'd be in a lot of trouble, wouldn't you? Uh, I, I cannot say. No, because you don't know, you naughty, naughty girl. But, regardless, we have uh, other things. <laughs> we have to and please, please, the court, bear with me. I am getting around about to the uh, discussion of the... Uh, the uh, <laughs> Uh, murder of the Troubles. I would like to call good sweet Xerxil for the stand, if possible. Xerxil is standing. Excellent, excellent. Would you join me and stand over here, please? Please, of course, okay. you're really convenience. Excellent, good Xerxil. I'm so glad. Um, if, in your own time, in your own time, not because we want to, but because you're willing to offer the information freely. Uh, did you or did you not, on the day this Lord Otto Halsworth uh, may or may not have been involved with us as a group. Were you not wearing standing watch on the stairs in his tower that may or may not have been shaped like a phallic? Zerxil was in tower, yeah. Good. Uh, did you find a note with you, Zerxil, uh, that may or may not have outlined his intentions to reality where I am from and should hold a stake legally? Zerxil found the paper, yeah. How oh, good. Do you have that paper with you? Give it to someone. Can't read it. Ah, well, <laughs> if it was here, of course, you'd know that on it, it had ill, horrifically designed intentions uh, from, from my reality where I live. Uh, of course, I was within my right to take offence to this and therefore defend myself in this situation, uh, which may or may not have influenced my decision based on the ogres in question uh, because I knew of their hostile nature. Now, Elzef, good Elzef, when you came face to face with this Otto, uh, did he immediately admit his wrongs and pay you your dues that you were owed? Uh, no, I, I remember this situation quite well. He said, uh, and I quote, uh, you shouldn't be alive and then cast disintegrate on me. Exhibit A! And he hands up his wand of disintegrate. This foul, murderous weapon was used upon my friend here. Do you still have a wound? Ugh, oh, it's hideous. She won't even show it. And my god, it is horrific. I have it in my hand right here. The one that nearly slain my friend disintegrate. A foul and beastly magic. Anyway, moving on. My, my next point. Thank you, Elzef. Good to hear you talk. We tried mercy. We used anacles of silence. And he clicks towards Macra, who I'm hoping still has them on him. No. No. He doesn't. Well, we used them. And we tried mercy. And the Faith Father, in his all knowing knowledge, was addressed by his own son. He said, Faith Father, intervene on my behalf. Stop these cretins from causing damage to my good self. And do you know what the Fae Father did? Good, uh, tender heart? Exactly. He did nothing, because he knew that his kin were in the wrong. He did not intervene. The all-knowing, by the way, Fae Father, as confirmed by his own kin here in this very court. He did nothing. As such, I would like to propose to the court, in our actions of taking our own swift and quick justice, were we not in extension doing the Fae Father's bidding of ourselves? I tell you this for free. He was very forthcoming when he came to the Fae Father's own machinations, a secret you must hastily guard. He told us he was going to come with his avatar. He told him, or us, that you, good sir, and he points at the Fae Father himself, were a lesser Deity. He said that. His own words. How insulting. He confessed 
to the rules of the celestial ladder, a secret that none of us should really know if we were outside of the Fey. And he told us your plan in detail to invade our own reality. Is that not treasonous acts? Do we not have a right, in our sense, to defend ourselves against ogres and anyone who doth come forth to threaten our reality? I riddle you this. Would you not have done the same? Uh, Would you not defend yourself against someone who comes to steal half your soul? Elzef, do you have half a soul? Good. Excellent. I thought that might be the case. 48% Master Decker. Ah, even worse. And did Otto Halsworth and his kin admit to inflicting this damage upon you? Uh, The answer is yes. They did. And that is a crime worth defending yourself against. If someone comes to steal an apple from your garden, do you not defend yourself? I rest my motherfucking case. Alright, so as you as you say that, uh, Gehl looks back at his father, nods. In the case of Offo Houseworth, I see that yes, you probably were defending yourself. The fact remains that you had him restrained, yet you continued to berate and torture him, and then finished him off in a most heinous manner, and then gibbeted him in the middle of the city for everyone to see. A demeaning act against my father. A cleric under his care, hanging there, strangled, the bruises still fresh. And not to mention you left the manacles on the body. Another stupid thing to do. Would you be so kind to return the manacles? We have left them there by accident. They are in the hands of the Bretonians. Ah, a shame. Trusted hands, of course. Nonetheless, would you please do me a favour and uh, regale me with your laws of engagement? Should you and another race go, you know, head to head on the field of battle? Or what would your rules be regarding prisoners of war or interrogation techniques? You know, state laws. I want to know. Gehor looks back at the Fae Father, the Fae Father nods, uh, and then Gehor. You have defended yourself well, Esther. Your words make sense, especially on the case of Offo Houseworth, and in the case of the trolls, he looks towards Aching Heart and then looks back at you. You obviously did not know at the time that you were killing agents of my father. You did, though. So... We will take a quick recess and, uh, and convene again shortly. You may join your friend and diplomat, Leniros. Meanwhile. All right, so you are gracious. At that moment, he stands up onto the throne and begins talking to the Fey Father, who, for the first time, begins talking back but in hushed whispers to his son. Uh, and Leniros, uh, I'm ass- they are guided by the guards up towards your platform where you are sitting with your sister. Okay. I'm quite impressed, Master Decker. I must admit, I was gonna have you do your thing and then plead unfit to stand trial on reason of insanity once you finish, but you actually defended us quite well. well but, uh, everyone needs a backup plan, I guess. But, I must say, I used to do this thing quite a lot. It's good to be back in the saddle. <laughs> you stand trial a lot, Master Decker. Ah, no, but I like to resolve myself around a courthouse. Always people to defend and quit. <laughs> we might actually stand a chance, though they have not yet brought up all the charges against us, I fear. Don't worry. I have further uh, arguments, should we need them, but I don't think we will. These people are very base. If you are wronged, you should be allowed to defend yourself. No, it, it does make perfect sense, Master Decker. And don't forget, you're still owed half a soul, and actually, a monetary value equal to your portal. We could probably leave here at an advantage. <laughs> this is correct. What's that clicking sound, by the way? Oh, sorry, it's probably me uh, using my note pen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just... I've got like I've literally got my entire defence laid out in front of me on an A3 that... piece of paper. That's amazing. <laughs> 
All right. I so, was very bored today at work, but also is, very, very ready for it. Quite impressive considering Chester just pulls up empty pieces of paper and here is taught with actual paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at this moment, uh, Lanieros uh, also is standing next to, or sitting next to his sister, which is the first time you're meeting her, and she greets greets her and says, You can all call me Val. I'm head of the guard here. A pleasure. Hello. Greetings. How goes it with Lanieros? Well, it seems that this might go in your favor after all. You should never have been in doubt. Well, you have not shown yourself to be much of a diplomat until now. Mm. How, why well, is that? that? As a compliment, I guess. You see, when the indeed occasion uh, rises for it, I would step up, but until that point, it may or may not be moot. Um... At that moment, um, from where you're standing, Elzef, uh, Gehor calls you and says, Elzef of Sea's End, present yourself. Oh, shit. Do you mean in a physical manner, in front of the court, or present get yourself? O- get over the... here. Here we yeah. fucking go. <laughs> Elzef goes back to the circle. Alright, yeah, and um, the Fae Father stands, kneels, so he's on one knee, and then beckons you forward. No, oh, Elzef goes forward. And then he speaks. You are the other half of Hador. 48%, yes. Otho did you wrong. He, he did me wrong, yes. It was not honourable. Yes. Honour is a difficult concept to comprehend, but uh, I've been told so, yes. Previous portals have been willingly built. Yours was stolen through trickery. Yes, if I had been given the exact specifications, I think my portal would be working just fine about now. Yours was a third draft. Uh, were the others inferior? The first one, yes. The second worked. Yours failed. Again. If I had been given the exact specification. He seems to deliberate, seems to, seems to think. Seems this this uh this Fae Father seems to take his time as he as he thinks through things. You have my permission to take back your soul. Um will it arrive in a package or um, in some sort of object? Hadar has gone rogue. Oh, uh, so uh, the initial plan we had, which is uh, kill your daughter, is still uh, on the table then? He nods. Why she... Is After you left the material plane, she did some things that should not have been done. Yes, she appears to have absorbed some sort of uh, strange mystical force uh, just before we were plane shifted. The Void Soul. I know all about the Void. Are you going to enlighten us before we fight your daughter? Let's just say that another worldly being that was once in contact with the God King is now in contact with her. Their objectives align. I see. Will you send us back to the material plane to do this? Perhaps. I am still deliberating. Well, it seems, in, in in my matter at least, we are on the same page as such. Uh, I give you my thanks. I feel like I have been portrayed wrong in the material plane. I helped you save many lives. Not you in particular, but your friends. And I almost raised his hand, but I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, what's up? 
Ah, uh, not a speak. If I may, then if you would allow me, I would happily carry this message to the material plane. It was intended that I would go on a diplomatic mission anyway. It seems that this might be a good opportunity. You know, the Neros. That is fine. But let me finish. Apologies. When the God King threatened Phoebo, I sent Hadar to corrupt the bomb so it would not kill. I am the one that petrified the city. And it was better than it being completely destroyed. The trade taxes in the city were quite high as such. I'm not sure if I agree with your statement of it not being destroyed being a good thing, but uh, I'm sure other people will. Let me depart you some information. There is a way to completely unpetrify an entire city. That of just takes down a node block. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he begins to outline the heart of a hydra. A swamp hydra. Oh, so the not the. Uh, okay, yes. It's blood. And, he, and he's just looking at you, see, making sure you're noting stuff down. Yeah, I'm. I am noting stuff down. So yep. Fine, I'll type. Swamp, <laughs> I was gonna do it afterwards, but I uh, swamp hydra. Mixed Art. in. Uh, mixed. Mixed with an ochre jelly. How is ochre written? O C H R E. O C H R E. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And finally, blished, blessed, blished, blessed with a wish spell. Oh, that, that's gonna be the difficult bit. And oh, that seems he, straightforward enough. As he sits back in his throne, the rest of you, he says. Let's convene. And as you all step back down, he begins to speak again. Chester, you have made fine points here today. Uh, good and wise. Uh, uh, Faith, father. But, I find you guilty of both acts against myself. One, the killing of Offo, and two, the killing of my agents near Phoebo. On what grounds? The grounds, whatever I want. He stands. Uh, now, yes, of course. because of the way that it was done, because of the facts that you have presented, I will be lenient. I have a favour to ask of you all. And if we refuse said favour... Then you never leave here. Totemic the... Falls will become your prison. Master Dick, I don't think there's any reason to be hostile right about now. Except that is... he's completely and utterly unreasonable. No, Master Dick. Sucks will agree. Sucks will wonder who Fair Father is to cast judgement. Is he free from judgment himself? No, it doesn't look Sakura. like it. I, I obviously uh, agree, but what he's doing is very, very much an, you know, I sentence you, but thing. So, uh. Oh, very well. Please Sucks continue. I think you're full of shit. <laughs> 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 he's made, he's, the faith I was made a powerful enemy here today, just in Zerk for the load. Well, we have to do so something after the god king is dead. <laughs> Are you finished? Yeah, we, of course, good faith, father. Uh, forgive us, good faith, father. Ah. There is a individual on the material plane that would see the world burn. Once a friend of mine, now an enemy. I wish to revitalize the world. He wishes to burn it to the ground. It doesn't have to be now. It doesn't have to be now. It doesn't have to be within a year. 
but before your lives are over, I want the fire salt destroyed. And that is our charge, as it were. In your own time, of course. And where would we find this fire soul? To be honest, he sounds like a dick. I have an agent <laughs> on the material plane. By the name of... Liam begins looking up the... Uh... <laughs> that's a pretty long name, Liam begins looking up the stuff. Uh, that's a... That's a... Liam is looking stuff up. Yes, by the name of Kaelfin Magmaide. And Zaxon and Zaxon and Chester. That's that name seems familiar. Does it? Yep. Does Chester know off the bat? Uh you can both make intelligence checks. Just, just straight out intelligence checks like just to determine. Oh, sorry, that was a saving throw, my bad. Uh, well, it's Didn't the same thing, it. isn't it? You don't have, you don't have a bonus to insert. Right. the same All right, thing. so both of you are... Well, especially Zerks will try really hard. Fine, remembers a particular Ganassi... Uh, oh! On, a, on a, a fire Ganassi on an island just after you left... Just after you left a Mokul. You met him on an island where there was a volcano continuously spilling out clouds of ash. And he was there. We, we tried to talk him into a life of piracy. I remember this. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says, this Janassi wizard is in alliance with my agents. He himself is an independent faction, but he is attempting to cure the world of this blight. I am too. I can, my vision for the future cannot come to fruition. Without the destruction of such a soul. And it wouldn't... And then he kind of goes, gets forward, leans forward a little bit and says, And it wouldn't go amiss if you uh, happen to come across the seed soul in your adventures. I am still looking for that too. Is this seed soul thing optional or a bonus or... All I know is that it was in the hands of an elf some time ago. She has yet vanished. No, I just don't understand the terms. Uh, is this part of our charge to give you the seed soul, or is it if we just get think, around it? Just think of it a way of to get on my good mood. The seed soul, he mumbles a little bit, is powerful. I see. So, we deliver this soul to you, and then, of course, uh, deal with this other individual. Not quite sure how we're going to do that. And in return, you Send us home whenever we like. The seed soul is not a requirement, but destroying the fire soul is. And no, I will send you home whenever you are ready. Now, Zach's already now. Are we not? ready now? Well, we Unless you want to get on our good favor. <laughs> he actually laughs and there's a smile across his face the first smile you've seen and he goes I kind of like you I you know where God King is you do? no, do you? if a father no, tell Zerxil Zerxil gets it soul I see give me one moment can you roll Master. a d? Can you roll a d hundred, Zerxil? Master Zerxil, so you're a cunning <laughs> negotiator. <laughs> uh, he turns to you after he basically he turns away towards the throne, holds his hands up into a clenched fist. There's a brief glow around his blindfold, and he turns back to you and says, "Alpha Dill is still hidden, even to me." Unfortunate. Did you not speak with the dawn of Mo the uh, mother of dawn? She is more powerful in scrying magics than even me. Maybe Zuck will forget. I mean, I mean, Chester or Elzef can remind you if you want. 
<laughs> we have already talked with uh, one of the hacks about this, Master Zexel. What do we know? I have no idea. She told us he's not a lich, she's preparing a clone. I don't know if she told us where the His fuck lair was, is inside the monolith known as the Watcher. But, uh, but he has moved the lair, didn't he? He has moved the lair, yeah. So we don't know where this, so I'm right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you are. Oh. Thank you, I like being right. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing stops you, this is me as a gym, saying go into the Watcher, you know, finding his old lair, lair and finding clues. You know, oh, like a classic Curtis. mystery! Fucking Curtis, once he's back, wants to do that anyway because we didn't loot the place. Yeah. Need to find Antwis, that's what I need. You just need to get the scrying spell, can't you have it as a witch? I think so, but that would require a level up, which we haven't had since the start of the game. That is true, we have not had. I feel like we're <laughs> standing trial in the court of the face. Yeah, because the... we have a core battle for that. Since the start of the game. I, I looked at it earlier, it's been seven sessions. Y'all need to calm down. It's been Never. seven sessions again? That feels like... What? Seven sessions? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did your last level up? Uh, just after you uh, got to Mokul, like, just before that, in the desert. Have we not leveled up once in the Feywild? I could have sworn. No, you haven't. Like, after you, just before you met the Yellow Tribe, um, you leveled up after defeating the God King. See, Liam just admitted we have not leveled up once in the Feywild, I can't believe it. Even though we've slain <laughs> a Void Dragon. <laughs> also, I would assume if the Fey Father can't scry on him, then I can't. Well, that's probably true. But you are, you are Xerxel, so maybe. And uh, just the Fey Father. magic scrying bastard. Fey Father begins to say, It has been some time since you have come here. It may seem like days to you, but on the material plane, some months have passed. Mokul is no longer Mokul. Will you cover the rent for my workshop for the time? I do tell. Idea? I will... You what? He looks at Elsef. Excuse me? Oh, please, please continue your thought. If Mokul is not Mokul anymore, I might not have to pay rent. I'd be interested in knowing what he actually was as well, you know, if it was royal, Bretonian. <laughs> and is under Bretonia control. <laughs> Bully! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you'll, you'll see for yourself. Family and culture. Getting in is going to be difficult, well... Is there anywhere that you would like to be when I send you back? Next to the God King. Or oh, this fire apart soul. From this. <laughs> you want to go straight to the fire soul? Uh, my, my lord, may I interrupt these uh, thoughts of my companions uh, to suggest you returning us to our home base, the flying ship we've hidden in the swamp? Uh, east of Moko City. West. That is what I said. He nods. I also would know where north, uh, well, west and east. I mean, it doesn't. He, he lifts his head up to the ceiling as he takes a deep breath. Your ship is no longer there. Huh. It wasn't my ship to begin with. I don't know if this is an issue for you, Master Decker. Oh, I'm a bit confused as to where I'm sending up, yes. Uh, Lanieros, do you wish to partake in this, these adventures that these people will go on, or do you wish to stay here in the Feywild? As mentioned, I'd be happy to carry out a diplomatic mission, and if that involves some less diplomatic... <clears throat> Details here and there, you know I'm not against it. My original goal was to revitalize the lands around Mokul. That can no longer happen without the God King in control. Our deal was with him. You know what I want, Lanieros. Make me the best deal possible. Understood. 
Does it have to be with the God King or just with whomever ends up? No deal control? with God King. No deal. His corruption is too far gone. Understood. You could help these people in any way in getting him off of the table. Then you will be rewarded when you return home. Very well. I will join them. He nods. You have done a great service to this court, Laniros. I will not forget that. I always saw you as opposition. But it seems not. Not opposition. Merely a difference of opinion, perhaps. Perhaps. I have agents all across Midgard. Wherever you go, my people will keep you under a roof, or aid you in any way possible. May I suggest that you begin by seeking out Kaelfin when you are done with your deeds. Very well. I shall do so. Thank you. Now, normally when leaving the Feywild, there is a possibility that you will not remember anything here. But then he moves his hand, and you all feel like a slight tingle, like a down your up, down your back, down your shoulders. And he says, "You will recall this." You're muted. I was just gonna make a stupid joke, and now we have to go through this whole "you're muted" thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this being the adventure in the Feywild, and not the slight tingle. Yes. Okay, because that would be pointless to remember. Now, finish any business you have here this evening. And I'm assuming you'll just stare at him by the looks of that. Like, <laughs> how, That's how... already now. Okay. How long would the evening have been if, you, if we had accepted that offer? Hours? Why? Oh, okay. I see. You know, when I'm here, the moon and... Yeah. yeah. No, we are ready to leave. Chester I mean, Tucker? I'm ready as the next person. I just didn't know if Macra wanted to, you know, go to a wedding or not. No, it must don't be, worry. Uh, this the is whole, superfluous. The whole wedding plan was to leave. Yes, I, I, I see that now, of course. Metaphor and rhetoric. Okay, now where would you like to go? Alright. Uh, where has the ship gone to? He shrugs. Oh yes, you you wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> Master Decker, where do you think uh, all these seer guards could have taken Master Macra's children? Ma well, Master Xerxel, you two know them best. I have no earthly idea, but... Don't know. And annoyingly, yeah. you guys remember that, um, that Mimu can cast uh, non-detection. Oh, so they could still be there, they could just not be detected. Send Zaxil to Mokul. Mokul it is. Although it's not called Mokul anymore. Oh, oh, please do tell me. I am rigid. You'll see. Does that, have, does that mean you have to rename the campaign on Roll20? I really hope I don't have to rename it this. Is it New Longinia? No. Is it but... New Bretonia? No. Stop. Seriously. Oh, sorry, you like you really thing. remind me of the fire song. The Southern Bretonian <laughs> colony. <laughs> now, take that as a compliment. Is it Mokul? Yes. Yeah. Sure. I'll just send us to my workshop or the Iron Blood Estate or the former Iron Blood Estate. Or probably best if we go to the Iron Blood Estate. Do you think? Don't yes. know if it's a good idea to go to. 
old noble house from Mokul, if it's now long, long, this place. You know, that's quite a bit of inside. Yes, uh, LZF workshop it is. Yeah. Wonderful. I have not cleaned in uh, months. It, it, uh, I... Or paid rent. Someone else might be there. Oh yes, I have also not paid rent in uh, quite a, a while. Again, I have not been paid. <laughs> <laughs> we have agreed on my workshop in case you're waiting for this. Your workshop in Mokul? Not Mokul. You've told it it is not called Mokul anymore. Yes, all right. And um, he steps up, thumps to the ground here, and begins moving his hands in gentle, gentle movements. And as he does, a water that was trapped beneath the crystals comes up and begins moving around you in a fine kind of uh, fin-like fashion around your feet. Foot, feet, yeah, feet. And as he begins moving it up and round, it begins to glow a silver with a silvery light. And behind his blindfold, you can see a white light uh, bursting forth. And he says, then go forth. And there's a kind of sickening sensation to all of your uh, stomachs. Like a, like a like you were grabbed instantly. Uh, Linaros, who's used to playing shift, gets this. Like, you're just fine. But the rest of you are kind of yanked really hard. As if you were going at like 5 Gs. Uh, going from 0 to 5 Gs instantly. And all of you kind of like black out momentarily. When you land in an empty workshop with the blinds down. And that's where we're going to take a quick five minute break because I am. Stick with me for a beer back. <laughs> no, no, I have to listen. Very good. I have to listen to her.
Was you now? All right, so we're back. And currently, the group are inside um, Elzef's empty workshop in the district of Avbu. A well-to-do area that was newly built recently, um, just for the group's reference. This is also where the hospice was that Lady Greenridge, the Greenridge hospice, was uh, somewhere along this road. Uh, oh, this also, is a really good area. Yep. This is where Chester could not afford to buy a house, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the blinds are currently down and it's dusty. Outside, all of you can hear the ringing of uh, Hammer against Anvil. And people shouting, some of it in some of it in Bretonian, like Bretonian common, clipped accents. Some of it is still the kind of accent you hear from Mokor. You hear one voice going, yes, take a door to the fresh flask, fucking idiots. And behind you, all right, all right. You know, I'm just a wagon rider. There's no need to act like that. And you you hear uh, the Mokor accent continue. Oh, these, these goddamn Bretonians don't know anything about business. And then it fades away. And then you can hear more wagon wheels, the snickering of horses. Let's go to watch ya. <clears throat> Feels wow. so strange here. Oh, oh yes. Wow. I'm sorry it is so dusty, Master Lanero's. Mm. Mm. You see that his eyes are adjusting a little bit to the weirdness of the light, much like you uh, needed mm -hmm. some adjustment time when yeah. you arrived in the Feywild. I should explain that to you, Lanero's. The world I just seems so dull, droll, grey. And it's taken a while for your eyes to adjust. It's like your depth perception is slightly off. Yeah, it's like, you know, um, when during a movie suddenly they switch, switch to a black and white scene. Yep. And suddenly everything seems like, oh, well, that's going to take me some time to get used to again. And then mm -hmm. eventually your eyes adjust and everything is okay. Um, but yeah, everything's so strange as well. And I think I explained it last time, like, uh, when someone asked me why it's so random in the Feywild, and said, well, it's like all the leaves would fall off a tree and just end up facing the same direction on the same, like in one line. That's what the um, yeah. <laughs> material plane always feels like to the neurons. So strangely ordered. Master Zerxel, before we go to the Watcher, we should figure out what the current situation is. Why? Well, we, we've just st stood trial. I don't think we should stand trial in front of the Bretonians, though I think Master Decker might have more sway there. We'll be good. I Why we stand out. trial? I vote we stroll straight to the Moonlit Shield. Of course, they'll be occupying it. <laughs> Settle the throne, no doubt. Well, if, that's well, if we need somewhere safe to stay, then perhaps that's the best thing to... Find first, no? Let's find some allies. I think that's most appropriate. <laughs> then we can take it from there and decide on priorities. Of course, what say you, Sweet Zaxxel? Zaxxel thought we was allies. Yes, yes. That is we not are. the point. We, we should have some place in the city where there are allies. Why? Also, that we have somewhere safe to stay. Just dig hole. No. Uh, of course. Uh, While a hole no. might be appropriate for you, it does not work for many others. I think the big hole. hole. Master Zuxel is correct. <laughs> a bigger hole would work for everyone, depending on size. Not exactly. It would function as a sleeping place, but if one wants to maintain a certain dignity, then, well, there are other things that are needed. What's dignity? I'll tell you all about it once we find some place to stay, shall I? Okay. A matter of perception, Master Zuxel paid no mind. What? And he's like, a matter of what? <laughs> perception, Master... Ah, I see. Oh, see. Oh, yeah, that is ex that is correct. <laughs> okay, so what is the plan? Um, you're leaving the workshop and going where? Yeah, it also checks if the key still fits in the door. 
It does still fit. Oh, wonderful. Why don't we find the ruling faction? Oh, would be a family, no doubt, given governance of this colony. Why <laughs> don't we go there and, well, for once, enjoy some home comforts while we're in the capital city? Um, Liam, sorry, could you give me the name of the um, ally that the PayPal sent us to? Because I did not write it down. The what? Sorry, the. Um... You gave us a couple of people to go to. Uh, Kale Finn and... Magma Hide. Yes, and he is. <sighs> Not most likely on what? No, no, I know. He's most likely on one of the islands, right? Yes, the Off Ashpeak the Heights. The Ashpeak Heights. Which oh, means we oh, get no. to go on another boat adventure! Oh, no. <laughs> one sec, my sheet decided to close itself again. Yep. Liam is like, I'll call this uh, adventure Mokul Empire, and it'll be in the Mokul City, and then I'll constantly send you outside of the Mokul City. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not keeping you enclosed in a city, you can do what you want. Okay, so your plan? Uh, I know Xerxes wants to head straight to the Watcher, but... Uh, I think Chester wanted to go to some Bretonian thing. Alright, Todd? Have a taste of foam, are you there, Todd? <laughs> I think he's muted. He or, is muted. Yeah, or he's, he's gone off gone. and done. He's gone off and done something. So the plan. Uh, well, then perhaps so we should get a sorry, what sorry, the city I is away. like now. <laughs> Where did uh, you want to go? Chester's, Chester's going to go and find the most powerful ally in the city. Uh, if it's the Moonlit Shield, it's the Moonlit Shield, but he wants to go and see some fellow Bretonians, but he's not also going to stop you guys doing what you need to do. So, I will go myself if I must. <laughs> I have connections of old. Yes, yeah, so I will join Jester in this matter. I believe it is important to make contact uh, with the new ruling faction and explain to them what needs to be explained. Of course, Lilius, you will be most welcome. With me, Chester, author. Famous. Yes, we are aware. Good. Okay, so you, you all leave into Avbu Avenue, and bright light hits you all from the midday sun. And you, know, you just, see, just a quick you? check if anywhere on the workshop it says for sale or something like that. <laughs> Uh, no, there doesn't seem to be a sign on there at all that says for sale. Um, however, to your left and right, you can see there are repairs being made on some of the buildings. And all of you from where you are look across the bay to Shiredell, which is currently, you can see, uh, scaffolding all along the, uh, the village there. It's being rebuilt, and you can see that once where the execution scaffolding was, that you guys got plane shifted, where the location mm -hmm. where you got plane shifted, and you can see... Something's been erected, a statue of some sort. Of, uh, of like, a person, or...? Yeah, roll a perception check if you want to. Is that everyone, or just... Oh, that... anyone who's looking that direction. I feel like you're more likely to know whoever that is than Elsef is. Nope. <laughs> None of you recognise... Um, mm. Passive 20... What was it, 24? I feel like you need to know that. Do you, does uh, Leneros know people in the material? Well, Leneros can roll! Uh -huh. Yeah, but my passive is way higher than that. Since observant. Okay. I'm gonna roll for macro. Um yeah, so passive twenty perception. Yeah, we spit it to you. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's not gonna end well. Uh oh. Nope, my friend also doesn't know. Alright, and um, so where are you all going? Like, is Zerk still splitting up from the group? No, if everyone else is intent going somewhere, then he'll probably trudge along for a bit. Okay. Yes. Uh, I am dying to know what Adrian uh, Arnie knows, even sorry. Yep, okay, so you, <laughs> you head north. It's gonna be Lady Greenridge or something stupid. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. it's way worse. You head northeast, uh, past yeah. the fresh flask, 
uh, past the House of Cats, following the um, that road that leads westward to the Moonlit Shield. You come across the Blood Barracks and you see that stationed outside in about a dozen tents is some Bretonian uh, soldiers, all in their kind of clipped blue uniforms with their golden pauldrons, shouldering their long rifles with... Uh, sabres at their side going about usual marching exercises you can see that there are some um, hound guards around that um, look to be just on guard duty uh, you don't see any blood knights at all uh, standing around none in fact but the building to the south you can see there is like a dozen hound guards lazing around on break smoking drinking having lunch you bypass that until you reach the walls and head up around the road towards the gates and the gates are wide open and you can see that they've been broken down recently and the portcullis has been bent out of shape and locked into place. There's about maybe a hundred Bretonian soldiers going about their business here. And you can see that there are people scattered around going about business. Uh, hammers against anvils. There are horses being drilled. People going about exercises. And Chester no notes one person you do see. Uh, he's known as Commodore Emerson Stonewood. And this half orc has a large tent with an open front, and you see there's steam being jet like propulsed out of different parts of machines that he's working on. He's tall and skinny and covered in greasy leathers, um, and people are kind of stopping and staring at Chester as he walks past, and they're like, <gasps> "He's alive! Oh. You're alive!" And one, um, what looks like sergeant with his three red stripes on his arm, walks up to you, Chester. Um. Sergeant, oh, Sir, good to see a fellow. You, you're alive. Many witnesses say you, you, you died fighting here for our cause. I did. Uh, many yeah. eyewitnesses said that Chester Decker tried to fight off the evil that was spawned on the beach, uh, and that you died trying was consumed by darkness. I did, of course. I remember now. Uh, and I've fought my way back from the Everplane. Oh, can you you, you make a deception check? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> so it's a statue of Chester, Arna, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course it would be. As I said, much worse. Oh, shit. Uh, you, should, you should seriously report to the Admiral. Uh, oh, where is the Admiral? Can... good to see you. Kane Chambers is currently in charge. Do I know Kane Chambers? Or... Yeah, personal family friend. Oh shit, Chester's <laughs> stock is going up. <laughs> like, lead the way. There you go, here's his description. And a lot of people are like, oh, like, just sighing and kind of gasping as you walk past. I know, I know. And at that moment, as you're approaching the entrance to the Moonlit Shield, you can see that the great symbol of the Mokul Empire has been torn down. And there, in common, for all to see, is the name of the city. New Chester. No! Oh, you can't stop be it. serious! That is glorious! You fucker! <laughs> Every time! That is so damn good. <laughs> Every time! If Chester has even half a thing to say about it, this is going to be the new colony of the Empire. Alright, and at the entrance of the Moonlit Shield, there are two big, burly, half orc guards. One female, one male. And as you approach, they both narrow their eyes and say, Ah, oh, Chester Decker? What? Yes, it is I. I, I, uh, I... And they kind of... one of The female runs into the Moonlit Shield. And none of you have actually ever been in the Moonlit Shield. Perhaps, Lanieros, you were in it maybe hundreds of years ago when it was not part of the um, Empire and more the, the Triumvirate. And as you're mm -hmm. led in, it's cool and dark and uh, magical lights glow on runes on the walls to light up this uh, palace. Many corridors uh, lead off to different rooms and you can just feel a gentle breeze even though it was bright and warm outside. You are led into an office uh, where behind a large emerald table is a half-elf man. Um, he's missing his left ear and his long silver hair is worn down apart from a circlet that keeps it out of his eyes. Uh, he wears a fine blue jacket with a red badge of an eagle on his left um left arm uh his forearms are tattooed 
with many navy tattoos. And as you walk in, there's a smile that comes across his pearly white kind of uh, a pearly white smile that comes across his face, and he goes, "Oh, if it isn't Chester Decker, live and well!" Oh, oh, and he leaps over the table to shake your hand. Uh, will the is there attendants in the room, like guards, or? Yeah, there are some guards. There's also um, someone you know as Vice Admiral Betty, uh, Betty Hamiltonia. She's a halfling and one of um, Kane Chambers' right hand right hand women. Ah, Admiral Kane, <laughs> a pleasure as always. I, I was wondering if I could catch a moment alone. The pleasure is all mine. I'm gonna have to send another letter to your parents and let them know you're alive and not dead. You know, that was my bad, knowing that someone could kill you. Ah, <laughs> not quite yet, of course. Uh, but if they could go, you know, this lot. You mean, my personal guard? Yes, well, of course, we're both here. There's no one in this entire city who could take us both on at the same time. He clicks his fingers. Betty, take all of my guard and lead them out, please. Me and Chester have business to discuss. And they they file out with a snap and a salute. As soon as the door closes, Cody! All right, buddy! Here, come have a drink, come on! And you he leads you over the table. little prick, I haven't seen you in ages. It's been some time, yeah. I oh, know, look at, look at you, Admiral with the Moonlit Shield. You fucking bougie little bastard. Pure luck, right? So, originally it was going to be Chad, but he had a play, and he was all like, no, I'm not going to do this. But look, it's me. Yeah, he's always Straight doing it flowery that way, old Chad. Yeah, all right. So all of you, take a seat. I'll get you some drinks. Wait, and see you guys. Just well, Admiral, well, 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 psychopath. Admiral Chambers, is it? Yeah. Um, he sees that you're being official and goes, "Yes, it's Admiral Chambers." Oh, you do yeah. not need to change your behavior just for my sake. I'm merely here. Uh, well. I'm accompanying Chester and the others, but I'm also here on a diplomatic mission, so... I was wondering if I should discuss those matters with you, or is there someone else that I could speak to while you... enjoy yes. your time reassociating with, uh, with Chester here? No, but first, of course, sit down, sit down. Everyone I'm just... Really well. good. Someone more important in this whole scene. Look, this one here, literal, this one here, seems alright, actually. He's from the Fae. A bit, you know, on and off. This one's... Fucking your case, so watch out. You, the one on the floor. Honestly, he'll watch the whole fucking city burn and he'll laugh and then you'll cry tears of blood. Just don't fucking fuck with him. <laughs> and he turns towards uh, Zerxel. Zerxel, you see this wide-eyed look on this uh, half-elf and he goes, Ah, oh, Master Zerxel, it's a pleasure to meet you. And reaches out to shake your hand. Uh, he just does a little wave at him. Yeah, okay, and he says, <laughs> Obviously nervous, kind of like uh, untightens his uh, collar. That's ah, and it's nice. it's a pleasure to meet you, um, Laniros, diplomat of the Fae. Sounds fancy. Ah, oh, very fancy. Well, not sure if it's fancy, but it's well. There's some official business included, and uh, it would be good to discuss that. But of course, it will not get in the way of you. Talking to an old friend, it seems. And who's this one, eh? And he looks towards Elza. Uh, right, actually. Seems to be an ally. Pretty decent, but don't, whatever you do, include any imagery in your sentences, because she's fucking literal. <laughs> don't worry about that, old Decker boy. You know me. Not much imagery yeah. in my sentences. Very true. But I mean, any. Like... Since you have taken over the city, um, what is with existing property and the property rights associated with? We haven't Ooh. taken anyone's property. In fact, most of the houses that people left and when they ran from us were, were, were staying empty until they come back. I mean, oh, we can't run a city without its citizens. <laughs> that is wonderful news. Uh, Another question, out of interest, since Master Decker's uh, departure, have his book sales gone up? Yes. You're one rich man, Chester. Especially back in Longinia. Ah. Well, that's always good to know. 
No that more one, questions from me. Th that that one about um, Mosset's face, the uh, dour-faced Grildar, Darth Grildar. That one. Oh, that's a hit with the ladies for sure. Oh, what? Uh, Spare with Serpientes. Yes, that's the one. That's Fantastic. The book. <laughs> yes, I know. Slayed him on a ziggurat. Oh, what a climactic battle that was. Well, we've been on quite an adventure since we last met. But, you, you know, you would have gale, you would uh, at some point. I just want to know this. Uh, seeing as you're now warden of the city, has the Empire been absorbed by the might of Long uh, of Britonia? No. You see, the uh, son of the uh, God King uh, retreated with his uh, new wife northward into the city of Ket. We're not here to destroy the Empire. We were here to rescue Amelie. Uh, but she, sadly, is dead and her body unrecoverable. Oh, uh, shit. Yes. And so, as recompense, we took the city. I was ordered to stay here and uh, hold. Um, the God King himself is still missing, so nothing's really come about that. No one's rallied behind him. Uh, there's a... Uh, that Grildar you mentioned, he's headed northwest and is currently at the Jade Tower. Uh, holed up with a lot of refugees. We didn't chase, of course. We don't wish to, to commit further acts of war. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Grildar's left. Well, he's currently at the Jade Jackal Tower. We are he's in correspondence. He's not leading the Empire. He led the refugees northwest. Uh, went with his family and, uh... We are in correspondence with him, and, uh, you know, um... Oh, what was her name again? Anna. Anna. Is Anna okay? Anna is fine, doing pretty well at the Jade Jackal Tower. She has taken up a job as an emissary uh, from her... from her state, from us. Good, good. What do you know of God King? You said his name. I know that he's missing and has yet to return. I hear that you guys slew him out on the wastes. Something like that, but he's not dead apparently. Yeah, oh, he, yes. he may or may not have other ways of coming back. I Sucks see. Has to go kill baby God King. Baby God King? Maybe not baby anymore. In time, juvenile. I uh, well, that's your business. I will not interfere. I'm just here to facilitate peaceful negotiations. Please tell me that we're going to keep the city, though. You know, a little foothold. It depends. You know how the bigwigs are back in Longinia. Oh yeah, that's true. But if I may interject at this point. You mentioned that you're here to, well, deal with the negotiations. If I can be of any assistance in the matter, then please let me know. I have a lot of experience in the matter, and can sometimes present things from a different point of view that might sway others. He nods. All right, I'll take use of you. I've known your nation for some time. I had dealings with someone that I believe you hold in quite high regard, the... Original, I think you refer to her as our first, Emily Tinkerton? The first? Ah, alchemist turned pirate turned queen. Yeah, quite yes. a tale. Your nation has certainly developed since then. Congratulations on monumental effort. He smiles. Um, cheers, I guess. Well, uh, I know you are probably long-lived, and you meeting the original Amelie is not that far-fetched. Yeah, she was a stubborn woman, if anything. Mm -hmm. Inventive, I'll give her that, but stubborn for sure. And you see the narrow scratches his head a little bit and says, like under his breath, like, whoever thought giving people fireballs would be a good idea. <laughs> well, um, I'll assist in your quests for as much as I'm here. And in any way, I can. Uh, <clears throat> he switches back to his admiral voice. So, anything you do need, just ask away. Yes, yeah, so well, perhaps you mentioned the bigwigs back in Longinia. 
Yeah, it's best not to get involved with those, obviously. Well, no, but I would like to know, if I may, what the plans are, so that I may find out some background information and try and shape events if they happen in that direction. If I am not aware of such plans, then it would be hard for me to contribute, seeing as how I can hardly ask in the middle of a conversation. Oh, by the way, what's Lingenia planning to do with the city? Well, and you would not that. be able to openly share. Well, I can expand, release... Expand, expand, expand. I can release the fact that we are here to negotiate peaceful transition into the Bretonian Empire. However, the God King is a very powerful individual. And if he was to, say, return, we may just give it up to avoid war. Thanks God King will not return. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I like the spunk on this one. M Master yes, says he, he has to return spunk? first so you can kill him. Gusto! Bravery! He doesn't need to return, we just need to find where the shit is hiding. So you, oh, you, you want to just kill the baby in the in the flask? Yeah. So a few things that might help with peace. One is, well, um, are you aware at all about matters in the Feywild? Nope. Well, then perhaps we shall keep it that way. I don't want to burden you with too many... No. Unnecessary details, but at least when it comes to two factors, being the God King and, uh, well, perhaps you have heard of the figure Hadar, we will try and deal with these forces. Yeah, that was what I was going to say. That, um, that was what I was going to say next, you know. Um, you deal with, probably find this God King for me, finish him off, perhaps there'll be reward in it, and, you know, then we can make. You know, New Chester, part of the Bretonian Empire. <laughs> really like that. Oh, oh. Yes, I knew you'd like it. You fucking little rascal. I love it. <laughs> it just reminded me, you know, the, f the first night we got here, got smashed in Avbu Avenue, yes? On that fresh oh, yeah. flask place, the one with that female Ganassi. Oh, she's she was awesome, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, we were talking about you and how the stories were going around, and I was like, how about we name it New Chester? And you know, you make mistakes when you're drinking, and you, like, name something, like, you know, like a son or a daughter or a pet dog, something stupid. Well, well, we did that, and, uh, you know, it turns out hilarious. I'd forgotten I'm the Admiral, and I had that power! <laughs> I love it. Yes. I just love it. I I what, when we eventually take fucking Midgard... And I uh, roll into Lerithia uh, at the head of an armada. I'll call it New Fucking Kane. Oh, Lerithia. Yeah, we'll stay away from that place. Ours one day, though. Everything's going to be ours one day, isn't it? He looks towards the. Like, looks towards Elzef and goes, Yes, everything. I mean, should we even mention this in front of other people? Oh, I was uh, thinking of uh, migrating to Longinia. Ah, Blake. welcome! Welcome to the greatest empire in the world! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. Yes, so you've mentioned uh, a maybe a reward for slaying the God King and Hader. Oh, Could we put uh, that in writing before we do it, and uh, then you decide not to give us a reward? Sure, what do you want? I would like a fully furnished uh, workshop ready for me in Longinia. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yep. With, uh... What are these things called you plant stuff in that have a roof? A, a conservatory or a, 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 a greenhouse. A, a greenhouse. greenhouse. Ah, yes, the finest greenhouse will be yours if you bring me the head of the goddess king. Uh, the, god the king of the yeah. gods. The god king, that's the one. Alpha deal. And Elsa just sets up a contract right there. What about your friends? Oh, I do not care for them. <laughs> 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 um. So. Um, well, I guess I should ask for your permission. Do you mind if I share the story of Hadar? It might make people seem more, well, understanding of your situation. Oh, you were asking me? I do not care what you tell people about Hadar. Right, well, <laughs> for you to know, Admiral Chambers, the reason that <clears> Hadar <throat> that sometimes comes out with well, phrases that one might find 
out of place is that she's currently missing 52%, is it not? It is 52%. Thank you, Master Linearis. You're the first person to get it correct. She is missing 52% of her soul, which is currently held in the form of Hadar. And Ah, uh, the, um, that shadowy thing that we saw on the beach. Yes, yes, I'm well aware. Yes, something of the sort, and we must... Well, it would be good for everyone, I believe, if we can get it back. Yes, well, if you don't know where the God King is, surely you could find her. That's what we intend to do. Hmm, well, good luck. What about you? And he leans round Chester and looks at Xerxel. What do you want? Xerxel needs nothing but God King death. Obviously, but have you thought about the future, dear lizard? This is all that matters. Master Xerxel, uh, a lifetime supply of crunchy spice, if I may suggest something. Xerxel just wants him dead. Oh, not even, oh. Not even that. That sounded so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well... And what about you, big man? And Matt Crocker just goes, Big house, money, that'll do. Aha! Write that in the contract! Get this big man a house and some money! It's like a very specific list of the things Elsef wants, and then it just says for Makra, big house and money. Yep. And then a question mark behind it, and then it continues on. Well, I'd like to wish you all good luck, and know that my doors here are always open for you. Um, oh, perhaps oh. not you, and he points to Xerxil, but the rest of you are more than welcome in. If I may, oh. I would like to add one thing to the contract, if that is permissible. Yes, um, maybe. If it would not um, cause too much of a fuss, it would be very beneficial for me to perhaps attend some of the council meetings when it's... Well, just to make the voice heard of <clears throat> some parties that you might not be aware of. That's the future of New Chester. Hmm. And, of course, the Empire. Sure, sure, sure. And then he clicks his fingers and goes, Hey, Betty! And she walks in. And he goes, Betty, do the thing! Betty, do it! And the uh, halfling nods, Of course, sir. And walks over to the contract and begins stamping it and signing it. And uh, then she walks back off with it. I must admit, this whole business is becoming much more lucrative than I first expected when I uh, made the first deal with Master Ironblood. Right, you can, uh, on that note... Mm. Oh, also, any arcane uses you need, uh, you can just ask. Scrying, the like, you know, I've got intelligence. Um, Mind God King. Okay, okay. Bit of a stuck record, aren't you there? What's record? You have no fucking idea. Never mind. I see. What do you mean, Zerxler? Um, is that you have a very strong recurring theme in the things that you say? It's important. Oh yes, yeah, so you don't need to explain to me, I'm merely explaining the language. Thanks. You will struggle with locating the God King, since uh, the Fey Father himself apparently uh, attempted to scry him and did not find him. Um, I would suggest scrying for any of his former advisors. Okay. And, uh, yeah. To map where they are going. Someone must visit him, he cannot be undefended. Yeah, I mean, as no, as a GM, you've got uh, the prince, Lady Green. The prince is dead. He exploded. What? What? Did the prince explode when we, when Chester attempted to rob him? I mean, no. that's the the prince, prince. Yes, but not, not, not the no. Like he, he was not the prince, the crown prince. Okay, a different prince. You mean? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you like I like understand the um 
Right, so the God King's son, firstborn son by his first wife, is called Hakat Fadil, who is going to be married to Lady Greenridge. Yes, he, I got that. But that is a different son from the one that exploded. Yeah. The one exploded yeah. was Manok Bastoff. Bastoff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now that that is good. Uh, it's good that you made that one now clear. Yeah. Manok is dead for sure. Yeah, Manok went into little ice cubes. He did. And we all know what happens to ice cubes in Mokul. They just melt. Because it's bloody hot. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. Chester would use them for... I was going to say a martini, but I don't think a martini has ice cubes. What has ice cubes? Uh... As you're... Oh, <laughs> As long, a long <laughs> in Ireland iced tea? Yeah. yeah. As you're uh, leaving, uh, the comp uh, Vice Admiral Betty does stop you in the corridor. Say, <clears throat> uh, permission to talk with Chester? Uh, you lot? She looks on the head, I think you We'll be yes. on our way. She looks up at you, being a halfling, and says, The Hadar you were looking for, the one that you mentioned in the meeting, she was seen heading northwest. Who's that? Say again. Sorry, I actually cut out there on the Discord. Hadar. The Hadar was seen heading northwest um, into the wastes, into the Yellow Sea. Shit, thanks. That's actually more uh, valuable than you realise. It's no problem. It's a pleasure to serve. She snaps a salute. Look, do me a favour. Yes. I quite like the name of this town. While I'm here, I'll deal with Hadar. You deal with solidifying up our hold, you know, as an empire. Just of course, sir. Of course. Anything for the empire. Start to sound like a, like a marine, like a fucking space marine. <laughs> <laughs> for the emperor. Yeah, for the emperor. Yeah. Uh, she says, uh, "Good luck, Chester. Good luck, uh, all of you." And as uh... good day, there you go, Elsef. Your soul is headed north, uh, also. <laughs> Let's go get it. Oh, are we doing that first? It seems like Master Zerxel is uh, more pressed for time than I am. And with your whole uh, solidifying this uh, empire thing, it seems like killing the God King first uh, would be in your favor. Makes sense to kill him while he's weak. That it does. Yes, we Sorry, did fight him once before, and I have no intention yeah, of uh, him casting another meteor storm on us. <laughs> So, Master Zexel, you must know a lot of things about the God King. Where do you think we should look? We go watch her. That's where he was. See if we can sniff him. To the Watcher. Alright. So all of you begin heading towards the Watcher. Uh, like I explained it before, this tower overlooks Shardell and has no seeming any way in at the bottom. Um, if I remember correctly, the rest of you flew in. I think uh, we'll just do that again, right? Sure. So who's casting fly? I am, and I'm going to take damage for this. Oh, yep. I'm going to cast fly on Chester. Um, that is, let me see, curse. How much do I take? That is 1d8. I need to press this two more times. Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's six, nine damage. All right. As, so you cast fly. Uh, as Elsev casts fly and just spits up blood. I think there's a better way to cast that. Uh, without the blood, Master Zerxel. Yeah, it's not a blood spell. You don't need it. Oh no, the blood is a part of the curse from killing the the goblin inside the void ring. You're still cast. Uh, yes. Oh. Zerxel <laughs> <laughs> like cast remove curse on Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Master Zerxel, Master so my faith in you was not misplaced. I once again realize. You should have said. 
Oh yes, I did not realize you were able to remove curses. But I always do the curse thing. Oh yes, but doing... Master Macra always kills people, but he cannot bring them back. It, it did not seem obvious to me. True, true. Okay, so we fly up. Can you fly? He points to Linaros. Ah, um, well, I did not take the time to learn the spell, but if it feels like we should have it, then I can spend some time learning it. Zaxil can cast for you if you want. Please do. That will cast for you. I'm just going to climb up the tower. Okay. I'm just sorting stuff out. Um... Oh god, I got that wrong. Yeah, okay, so as you're climbing up the tower, are you heading to the same window? Might as well. Providing okay. no parameters have changed and it's still an open window. No, it is, and the window is still open for the last time you left it. And as you guys climb into this bedroom, like I explained before, there was a um, a carpet that's still been shifted to the side. Um, the teleportation circle in the center. To your right, you see the mirror with all the, the uh, vanity mirror with all of the uh, objects on it all knocked over, smashed uh, because the way that Macron managed to climb out last time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is a bed, and the door is still wide open, leading into the main um, the main kind of stairway that leads down into the rest of the tower. What you do find, however, is that the place is less threatening during the day with sunlight beaming through the windows. You don't hear that odd creaks, you don't hear the taps or the scratching of quills on parchment. All of the rooms seem to be devoid of any of the ghostly spirits that you saw last time. All right. Main well, room, I guess. All right. Do you remember? Do you remember how to get into the astral plane from here? Oh, was yeah. it actually in the astral plane? You step on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> well, the rock's been moved to the side. Yeah, it was like a. That's how Macro got trapped. Remember, he walked across the room and just stepped on the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the astral plane is the portal in the middle of this room that leads through the mirror to your right. Um, however, there is an entire tower to explore. Depends what you want to do. Well, we're going to uh, explore the entire tower eventually because we're going to look for every, uh, you know, little tidbit of information we can find on the God King's whereabouts. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, I, you told us the God King was somewhere in the astral plane, but I don't know if you told that to us or our characters. Do we know this? That he was. Yeah, yeah. He was told to your characters by the um, uh, by the uh, Mother of Dawn. Right. Okay, He's then I think we all go on an astral plane ride first, right? Mm hmm. All right, so you get you walk onto the portal and are instantly transported um, to your right through the mirror, and you arrive in the room, and in the corner is still the corpse of that undead creature that Macro had been forced to fight. Its head bent slightly backwards because of the force that he'd hit it with. Mm -hmm. um, you're currently in a room with one window and no doors. What's hmm. that window? Uh, as you peer out the window, it's just blackness. Is anybody good at the looking? Yes, I'll have a look. Alright. So I should peer I'll, out. I'll help Linearos look. Yep. Um, as you peer out, Linearos, below you, you can actually see the base of the tower. Mm -hmm. Um, And you see there are several windows. And to your left, as you look down the sides of the walls, uh, on the, the wall of the tower, there are handholds. Okay, are we still um, under the fly spell? Yeah, if, if Katurks was concentrating on it still. Don't see why not. Okay, let's fly up. Alright, so you fly fly down, and I'm assuming Zerxel can do his climby climb thing. 
I'd like to think so, especially if there's handholds. Now, so you come across two windows as, you, as you're going down towards the base. Um, they're the same type of window as the one on the third floor that you just climbed out of. Open. Okay. All right, fair enough. If you, yeah, they're not open, no, but they can easily be open. Yeah, open it. All right. So on the second floor, you open it. Inside is another room with no doors leading out. The room has a bed, more of a cot uh, to sleep in, like kind of just something in the corner with some uh, with some quilts and stuff. There is the trace of some fluids on the ground that are kind of like a yellowing, sallow color. Um, there is Take a. <laughs> You knew this it, was gonna happen. It's awful. It it honestly tastes awful. Um, might be fine for Zerxil, but uh, I, the only way I can explain is it tastes so chem like super chemically. Like it's more if he recognizes it. That's how he identifies stuff. He tastes things. Doesn't look at it. Yeah. Tastes no, it. you don't recognize this fluid. And there is also a desk, a writing desk with uh, papers all strewn across it, and a what looks like a drawer. <laughs> Uh, drawer underneath that's been opened wide and there's stuff inside scattered around. Can you do the read, Ladeiros? Mm-hmm. I'll try and see what uh, if I recognize the language. Okay, most of it's in common. Okay, so I'll have a quick cruise through. Okay, my, make, uh, make an investigation, investigation check. That's for investigation is 24. I know, but I'd like you to roll it. Okay, but it's so lame when I roll badly. It, yeah, but that is what <laughs> that's what it's for. All right, so you with your investigation, you find letters, um, like uh, draft letters written in a, the common tongue to different nobles. Um, this looks like to be one of the God King's private sanctums, an area where he can sit do his thing right, be away from the world above. Um, most of the letters are official documents, like to nobles and soldiers and blood knights. Um, but with that investigation check, you do find a necklace, like a, a, on a silver chain, a pendant. And inside is the painting, as you open it, the painting of his first wife, the, uh, the Methuselah. When she was much younger. Well, this should be useful. What is? Well, um, we were having trouble scrying before. This is a very personal item and should greatly increase the chance of scrying spell succeeding. Mm, good, good. Thank you. Would you like me to hold on to it or do you want to carry it? Sexual take. All right, I'll hand it to Zexel. All right, hand it to Zexel. Zexel, you have a, a pendant of, with Alexandra Tepec inside. I'm just going to put my fuse on. Yeah, that'll do. It's easier to spell. Is it? Uh, apparently, Todd's Well, I know how to spell my but I don't know how to spell... Alexandra. Yeah. Right, so, so it's like Tupac, except she's not a rapper. Apparently Todd's having some trouble listening in apparently Discord's being weird for him. I okay. hear um, as all at the moment, but I think both my housemates are streaming, so I think there it's taking a little bit of a dip. Tell them not to. At the moment. Tell them that you're busy playing D D. Yeah, I have already. I've told those bitches. Kick them out. <laughs> it's okay. Alright, so in this room. You don't seem to find much else with your investigation check other than that, that amulet and the fact that he's he's wrote a lot of personal letters um, in it. And um, one letter describes his feelings at uh, his wife's death. Can you read it to me, please? Slowly. Um, yes, but I will not read it in such a way for your pleasure. I'll read it for information if you don't mind, because that's a little bit... Well... <laughs> dark. Yes, yes, information. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so the letter says, uh, My dearest Alexandra, without you, I feel nothing and am nothing. My troubles increase. Broldar Ironblood continues his rebellion. I have an idea. I will try to take Port Phobos from under him. 
I plan to deliver a speech. You always did like my speeches. And since I've got old, my charisma has waned. I write this letter knowing that you will not read it, but knowing that this makes me feel better, that you may be able to see it from where you have gone. The fact that you did not want to come home when I paid so much dearly to try to resurrect you means that you want me to follow you. But trust me, dear, I will follow you eventually. But my time here is not done. My goals are yet not complete. I love you. Forever faithfully, Alpha Dill. All his time is done. Mm. All right. Shall we try other room? Yes. Okay. You guys fly out and uh, so climbs down to the next uh, next room. The the window opens, revealing a dark uh, dark room, not internally lit this time. There is a cupboard with its drawers, like its doors wide open, and a walk-in closet with tons of what looks like dozens of robes all scattered across the floor. And there is a door in this one that leads out. The door looks metallic uh, this time, unlike the wooden kind of exterior uh, interior that you've been seeing. And it's got kind of a, a diagonal line in the center, like an indent. Let's go quick spell writing thing. Um, you mentioned robes and stuff across the floor as well, right? Yeah, there's uh, robes all scattered around like he was in a rush. All right, I'll check to see if any of them have any, um, any of them seem magical at all. Or whether it's just dressing robes, basically. All right, make, uh, do you have detect magic or anything like that? Or is it just a... Uh, um, I am going to give a concentration up on detect magic, yes. Okay, yeah, one of them is uh, magical. Well, this one seems to be quite interesting. Hold on a moment, Zuxon. Um, and I'll just fold it up into a neat package and stuff it in my background. Uh -huh. Yeah, write down um, God King's robes in brackets magical. It'd be really creepy if I took non magical robes from him. <laughs> if they're nice robes, I mean. Um, also, uh, you find his masks, his modern day masks, not the one that you found in his old sanctum, the icy sanctum, but kind of like the ones he wears in this era, uh, scattered along the floor as well. You know, the golden one with the, the sun prongs mm -hmm. along the top. So that's oh. going to give it a good taste. Yeah, it tastes like his sweat and perfume. Yeah, well, that was the idea. He needs to identify. Well, this might be of some use and or value. Um, do either of you have a bag with sufficient storage capacity to bring these along? Well, Seth, you seem to prefer putting things out of that small bag of yours. If it's just ropes, I can fit them in. Let me have a look at them, at them while you search the room anyway. Uh, well, I've already... Seeing that these are magical, so we'll do that later, and the rest is not. But I wanted you to carry the mask, since those don't fit in my backpack. I do not have a magic backpack, either. <laughs> do you not have a bag holding? No, I didn't make one. Where would I? Uh -huh. I had okay. one. I do believe good Macra has one. Does Macra have an additional one? No, I don't think he does. I like what he had. Can maybe take one mask. This thing's got a big pocket. Very well. I'll take a mask. All right, you take a mask. God King mask. If he has a bag of folding, it's not in, in his inventory. No, he doesn't. No, I guess, I guess he probably doesn't. Yeah. Grill, Grill does the one with it. All right. So yeah, like I said, there's another door in here, like a metallic door with uh, with some sort of diagonal line in the middle of the door. Mm -hmm. I'll see if there's any, uh, if there's like an arcane mean to it or whether it's just a carving. Uh, you don't see any arcane means at the moment. It's like, it's kind of, the door itself seems to be made out of a very durable metal, but it's not a magical metal. Okay, um, I'll start. Stepping back a little bit and prying mage hand along it to see if I can get it open. Okay. Uh, as you go to cast mage hand, uh, you're staying at a distance, I'm assuming, to do this. 
<laughs> yeah, 30 feet. Yeah, it doesn't seem to do much. It doesn't open it. There's no handle, there's no obvious way. Means yeah, yeah just, just like running his finger along the lines and stuff to see if anything happens, or pressing palm against it, things like that. No, it doesn't seem to do anything to it. Okay, and is the tech magic catching anything on the door? Nope. Why don't you do the bang open, Chester? I can uh, subtly give it a go. But I'll give it a uh, little perverted peek. Are oh, you going to cast He not? says. I am. I, and was. And then I accidentally kicked the scroll, which takes me back on the thing, which takes me about 30 seconds to do it. Alright, so you cast Knock, it's fine. You can you don't have yeah. to click it, you can just take this spell off when you're ready. And as, as yeah. Chester uh, casts his spell, from where the diagonal split is, there's a hiss, and the door opens from the split, like a mechanical automatic door, <laughs> revealing something glowing ahead of you, about maybe uh, 80 feet ahead. A kind of platform... Um, Surrounded in kind of this spiritual mist, and there's a blue glow. However, there is something glass floating in it, and uh, Xerxes with his dark vision, and uh, most of you actually, everyone but Chester, sees a humanoid figure floating within this blue liquid. Uh, however, on the right and left in this room, there are these weird carvings coming out of the astral plane, and these big old pipes with blue magic passing through them, heading towards this platform, powering this big glass uh, vial of sorts. And um, there is a bridge that leads to this platform made out of what looks like some sort of uh, steel or bronze with these blue lines of runes uh, embedded deep within the metal. This bridge is 10 feet wide and as you peer into the left and right and seeing all these weird orange and bronze masks that are similar to the God King's face peering out of the walls and the spiritual mist that floats in, you feel like the area is cold as this mist is bringing in some sort of chill. And there are these dodecahedrons uh, sat, on, sat on altars to your right. There are three on the right and three on the left. What the fuck is that? That's the echo of Tarnadin. Yeah, my laptop's having a nightmare. I, I literally don't know what's happening. You're just techno, Sorry. techno tarded. It's fine. Some spooky yeah. sounds while Liam. Yeah, was like electronic sounds came through. But okay, so to the left and right, there are these po like these these altars where these uh, dull dodecahedrons, about five foot by five foot, kind of stand on the platform. Um, currently, you're all. Yeah. Um, magic here, I assume. Uh, lots of it. Um. Okay. Uh, particular schools or everything? Necromancy. Mm -hmm. well, Zexal's going to head towards the okay. thing. No, okay. um, no abjuration. Uh, no, no abjuration. There seems to be some abju abju uh, abjuration around the vial, that the large kind of case that the clone is in. Master Careful Zexal when touching that, uh, Master Zexal. There seems to be some protection around it. Magical. There seems to be some strange machinery here, Master Zerk, so uh, take heed that there might be traps. Mm. Okay. How far away is it? About 80 feet from the door. Oh, let's whip a fireball there, let's see what happens. Alright. I assume we roll initiative as the masks attack us. <laughs> I would advise against that. And then nope. I just see the bee disappearing into the mm. distance. Yeah, it disappears in the distance. Why? <laughs> yeah, it lights up the darkness. And and as it does, you see that it shattered part of the glass, but only part of it. You said it could be trapped, so it's safer back here, right? That depends. Some have. So there are traps which have uh, quite potent arcane feedback, so the stronger spell that you send at it the more it will hurt you. That does not seem to be the case, so in this case, I think all is well with your procedure if you wish to break it. Sucks to not know about traps, really. Yes. Seems okay. I suggest uh, we share I'm... our power and just bomb it with all we have, since this does not seem to have done enough. Well, perhaps there is still magic protecting it, so if you would allow me, and I'll cast a spell magic on it. Okay. 
Yeah, can you make a uh, intelligence check then? Yeah. Remember your inspirations, guys. Remember them. Yeah, I have a lot, so what can I do to, for this? Let you me... can just use it as a basic inspiration if you want, but... Mm. You can increase the save. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, I'll just use normal inspiration. That's fine, even though okay. we know what that does. Okay. 80. All right, so as you cast a spell magic, uh, you see the abjuration. Are you fo are you focusing on the vial? Yeah, the big uh, container that it's in? Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that dispels, and the magic, abjuration magic from the vial fades. Okay. Well, perhaps you could try again with something a little bit less violent. I believe the protection magic should be gone now. Nothing less violent. Okay. Would you like me to try then? Okay. L less violent in what way, Marcelo Nero's? Oh, I'm just going to send some firebolts at it. Okay, who's doing the firebolts? Me. Nero's is. Alright, so yeah, one by one, they just hits the glass and takes chunks out of it. It's thick glass. It's like two, three inches thick and it's taking chunks out of it, but that's about it. Oh, mm -hmm. cast Shatter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, so <laughs> pull the grenade, roll it in, and it misses because it's at 80 foot away. Thank you, fucker. I mean, I assume that she would know Elf that before goes closer. Close <laughs> enough to throw the grenade. <laughs> all right, so you, you go, all right, you see you walk in, so you're 20 feet in, and as you walk along this bridge, it lights up, and to your right and left, the dodecahedrons lie up with blue fire and rise up, and they look to be like fancy lights. They just emanate this light and light up these faces that are built into the wall, these big bronze masks of the God King. And as you throw the grenade, it hits the actual clone inside the vial this time, uh, inside the container, and it sinks with a and falls into this blue liquid, which then splashes up onto the platform in front of you. And there's a rumbling. I will start uh, slowly backing up at this point. Right, as you do, uh, the door goes poof, and locks Elzef in. Oh, no. And can everyone roll initiative? going forward. <laughs> Oh, you're going forward? You can go on. Yeah, I've got to make sure the, dog, the God King's dead, so... Yeah, yeah right. Zorko definitely, definitely wants to kill, right? And right in front of you, before I make you roll initiative, um, Xerxil and Elzef see this... Well, you shouldn't have done it yet. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm going to explain before moving you to the map, is all. Alright, and you see a big blue hand, the size of a person, come out of the blue liquid, slap down on the side, then another one, and then a massive arcane blue image of the God King pulls himself out of the pool down to where his waist starts. And he's still wearing the bronze mask he does. And then the cables behind that were attached to the vial burst and then reattached to his shoulders, begin pumping him full of magical energies. Energies. His eyes glow white and he just goes, <laughs> I knew you were coming. Then I'll move you to the map and you can all roll initiative. It doesn't matter for me since it's not linked to my token ever anyway. I know. I'll, I'll roll. I've added your turn. That's a nice map. Oh, Thank look you. at you using your Patreon subscription. I know. Thanks, Seppaku. Thank you for... I roll 12 so often. It's crazy. Shall I roll for Macron myself? Well, I can't, so... There you go. Chester, what did you get? Hey, one well, baby, two. Bear in mind, Chester, Lanerus, and Macra are now blocked from Xerxes and Elzef on the other side. Curtis's character sheet is fascinating because instead of personality traits, he just put in Macra's stat bonuses into personality traits. Yeah, I know. Um. I'm not sure if this is related or not, but I'm, I just want to mention something that's in the Nox spell. Uh, if it's like held with Arcane Lock, uh, that Arcane Lock is not active for the next 10 minutes afterwards. Nope. 
He, okay. Uh, contingency spell went off, but it's okay. Oh, you rolled for an 18 for Macra, yeah? Then I didn't yeah. roll before. Let's, uh, let's forget that. He gets advantage, so. Hmm. Right, so Chester Decker, as the door slams in front of you, it is your turn. Aha! <laughs> uh, doesn't know what he's gonna fucking do though, because he hasn't been able to hear shit for the last two hours. <laughs> You're fighting the God King. Excellent, thank you. But we're behind the door. So I can't see shit. Nope. Nope, there's a, just a big a metal door. door in front of you. It closed again okay. after you cast knock. Can I recast knock? Yeah, if you want. Fuck it, why not? Let's give it a go with Yonder. Alright, so you cast knock. And the door opens. Bearing in mind, I will let you know now, but it will stay open till the start of your next turn. Uh, fucking hit him, and I'll direct that towards Elza. He's staying outside of the room? No, I'm going to move in. Alright, so you're currently now on the square that you're in? Yeah. Where's it on the inside? Yep, uh, bearing in mind that you've, you would have had a rest, so you can restore your HP. I think. Is that... Include spells as well, yeah. Well, you would have a short rest, so you could use hit dice. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and uh, this room is creepy. Uh, to your right and left are these spiritual masks of the God King that are now began moaning with a uh, uh, sound. Nice. Right, so Chester, that was your turn. Yeah. Who, did, who did you explain a bag? Elsef. Ah, Elsef. Elsef. Alright, initiative count 20. The big thing in front of you, made out of blue magical energies, brings one hand up and it begins to glow with black necrotic energy, slaps it down on the bridge in front of you, and a wave of necrotic energy bursts, roiling towards you all. Can Chester, Zerxel, and Elsef make constitution saving throws, please? Um, uh, do I add something? I don't know. Um, sure, well, fuck it. Let's try. That's a great save. <laughs> well, lucky you, Ch uh, Zerxil. You got exactly what you needed. <laughs> Lovely. Alright, so as this wave of energy comes towards the group... Um, it rushes over Chester, and the first thing that happens is, Chester, you immediately feel the stinging sensation, intense pain, all up and down your body as this force washes over the, over you. Xerxil manages to hide behind you and take half of the damage, the same with Elzif manages to dive out of the way and bring up uh, some sort of... You got a shield? Yeah, Elzif has yeah. a shield. Yeah, and hold a shield as it pushes against it. It deals 58 force damage to ah. um, Chester, and then 24... 29 for, uh, force damage to Xerxel and Elzef. Math. And then Elzef's turn. Ruined. Did you get this made for the game, or did he just have something so thematically fitting? He had something so thematically fitting that I thought I won't even need to make a token. That's amazing. I know, right? <laughs> Very nice. Elzef uses an action to create a death machine, and then... Yep. Bonus action to have the death machine fire. A 25 Yep, it's a good hit. Blast the hole through the magical energy and he makes a sound as the as the magical energy then restitches slowly. I'm Elsa of Sea's End. We have met once before. And then I end with. Mm-hmm. Alright, Macra. Oh Oh uh, yeah, I'm yeah. also doing that. <laughs> uh, the door is now open, yes? Yes, it is. So... That is 70, 75 feet. How much movement feet does fucking Makra have? 40. Oh, he can dash there. Great. He doesn't have a bonus action dash or anything, right? No, he doesn't. 
Then he just dashes there and rages, I guess. All right. Um, there you go. He rages. Okay, I think that's a that's a job well done. Yeah, <laughs> that's his uh, turn. Okay, then as a legendary action, the big thing brings up the hand that was uh, um, released the force of uh, wa the wave of energy, and then brings it round in a slow movement, and uh, and then cracks Macra in the chest. He manages to hold the arm and not go being knocked flying back, but Macra does take a total of twenty four bludgeoning after twelve. Okay, that's good. Then he uses his reaction to hit the God King. All right, cool. Ah, uh, look, I, well, I got this. I got this down. Yeah, you do. Oh, and it's a good strike. He brings it up, cuts through the wrist, and parts of it separate, and then you see these tendrils inside trying to pull it back together. All right, Lanerus? Uh, yeah, one question about the terrain here. Um, mm -hmm. Like, this place where these uh, Dodecons are, can I get yeah. close to them, or is it like um, a bridge gonna... that I'm going to fall off? No, you can hop onto the platform they're on if you want. The platform seems to be floating. Yeah. Uh, I would like to just hop onto the platform over here then. Yep. And as you do, they mm. kind of like vibrating, with full filled with magical power now. Well, that's probably going to bite me in the ass, but hey. <laughs> um, and then I will cast a Big B's hand. Ooh. I think we uh, we found a token for that, didn't we? There it is. Is, is there a slightly more subtle one than the middle finger? <laughs> no, that's all I've got. <laughs> Unless I can find one for Why you. would you not want yeah. this one? Well, um, could you put it behind the God King, please? How about Spinning. that one? Well, yeah, that's better. Up there? Uh, yeah, exactly. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to start trying to rip out the um, tendrils from its back. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright, you need to make a strength check. Uh, yep. It's got plus eight, hasn't it? Uh, um, yes. Yeah, plus eight. So twenty-three. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you managed to rip out one of the one of the uh, things on the back. Seven more to go. All right, and that will be my turn. All right, one. Nice. At the end of at the end of that round, it brings up its other hand, holds it up above its head, and it seems to have this kind of slow vibrating angular movement as it brings it down, aims it at the rest of the party, and poof, a mass amount of magic missiles burst out of the right hand, arc out in a big line, and then just separate and begin going to all different members of the party. How many are going for Elsa? Uh, nine. Yeah, I've got a cast shield. Same question. Uh, nine. <laughs> are you? <laughs> so you like, ding ding ding! <laughs> Did you um actually give yourself the HP back, by the way, Chester? I'm sure he did not. Was that me? Yeah. Uh, I gave myself the HP back. Yeah. Yeah, you should have the HP from the fucking brutal <laughs> way. <laughs> All right, so Chester takes oh, right, se okay. seventeen force damage. Zerxel takes nineteen. I want to point out Chester also cast a spell, so in theory we'd need a wild magic search. Oh my god. Chester? I'm gonna give him that. Oh, holy shit. shit. Oh, that's level <laughs> 6. Okay, I was gonna say that's a so big bad. roll. Oh, that's like his primary damage spell. Right, Chester, fireball. Ro roll yeah. a wild magic search. It's only two damage spells. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't forget, you still have life. advantage on saves as well against him from before. And that you do extra damage to him, right? No, it just saves. Uh, I thought it was something with attack rolls as well. Oh, not, yeah, it's not attack, damage, yeah. but yeah. Um, some of that counts for spook. So, Chester, just roll me a wild magic, sir, just to see what happened. And uh, Macro doesn't take any of the damage because he's too close. He's Wait, getting yeah. really in there. 9, 18. Yeah, I've rolled the right amount of magic. So okay. Do you want me to roll for you, Chester? Did you yeah. get the hellish rebuke, Liam? Sorry, yeah, guys, I, I really did. can't hear you. Like... A wild magic search. You cast a spell, friend. There you go. There you go. Seven thousand. Hey, thank you. Sorry. It's all right. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Target's yes, entire Jordan. family is arrested by royal decree. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's amazing. So the target in this case of the was spell the was the well, door. That was, so that was kind of funny, but I just can't work out anything. He can't hear us. I mean, it was a door, so this doesn't apply in this situation anyway. Yeah, there's a difference between caster and target uh, things on the list. Yeah, okay. I like to think there's a door factory that's just been raided. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious at Chester's case. <laughs> Alright, so Xerxil. Uh, move forward. Uh, sorry, what was what happened with Alex Rebuke? Did it hit him? Yeah, oh yeah, he, he's got no decks. Nothing, can't move. Ah. Okay. <laughs> that is very good to know. You notice Hello. he didn't even try. He just let it hit his magical energy. Mm. He didn't. Uh, Hello I will there. Try fireball. to ruin him and try to make it more difficult. Brilliant. Classic one. <laughs> Alright, he fails. Lovely jubbly. Do um, you know what? I just. By four. None of you can miss. He's got two AC. Cool. Oh my well, god, then, what? Spook does this amount of damage then. <laughs> Yep. This is just, this is like an enrage. He's probably like an HP blob. Yep. And at that moment, yeah, Zer like, uh, sorry, um, Spook goes in and managed to grab parts of the essence and corrupt it and rip it out and it slops to the ground and it's a black sludge. All right. Can you fail a DC 10 con save? Why? Oh, yeah, no, he. Yeah, he can. Because I know what you're like with bosses and getting HP back, so let's make use of Spook's abilities. Alright, yep, yeah, no. Yeah, there, it succeeds. Nice. Alright, so at the end of Xerxel's go, it brings forth the hand, strikes at Macra, and Macra manages to dive roll out of the way. So, Chester Decker, it's your turn. If you can take a turn. Did you get my text? I only just got it. Okay, it's just asking if I still have a disintegrate to you. You've, so you've, to you've, yeah, you've, that's going on. you've only just got it back. Okay, cool. Let's pop that off. Boodoosh! Yeah, that's a good hit. Bring the wand up. Make sure you negate it down from 11 to 10. And... <laughs> Make a massive hole for its chest. It leans back like something from Attack on Titan, slamming against the wall behind it before pushing itself back up. Anything else, Chester? Uh, can't. Yeah, I can't tell if it's still my go or not, apart from I heard anything else. So I'm going to go with an Explanabrag on a sweet Xerxil. Alright, I'll add it to Xerxil. All right, so no idea what's that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Like I don't know why we can hear him perfectly. Mm -hmm. Maybe his discourse just fucked. Yeah, up I can tell that you can hear me because I can hear you guys every now and then. I just think it, I, my, I, it's either Discord or my Wi-Fi, one of the two. If it helps, you can right-click on people's pictures and disable video. If you disable people's videos, it'll stream easier. Oh, that's a new feature I did not know. Alright, so just before Elzev's turn on initiative count 20. Um, I hate that I have to roll these in. No. no. It brings up its hands and then just goes to wail on Macra with its fists. Hits twice for a total of 41 bludgeoning. Reduced to 20? Yeah, reduced to 20. And then. And then goes in for an elbow strike. Oh. Goes in for an elbow strike. Can Macron make a strength saving throw? I know he's good at them when he gets advanced. I would. I, I sure hope he can. Uh, 26. Yep. Yeah. And as the elbow strike goes, he brings up his hands, puts it to the side, and it slams into the platform near Spook. And then he slowly right, like reaches up with his arms. All right. Elzef, your turn. Um, Death Machine goes brrrr and shoots. 21 for 13. Okay. Uh, what you did notice as well as on initiative count 20, a lot of the wounds that you'd inflicted on it started to stitch back together. Yep. It's a, it's a DPS rush. Um. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a DPS rush. Okay, okay. 
Alright, and I'm gonna strain it. We're gonna cast web. Alright, it looks like as the web hits it, it looks like it doesn't seem to hold it down. Well, that's a shame. It's immune to the restraint condition. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. It's good to Aww. know. <laughs> I'll, right. I'll let you off the hook this time. Yeah. It's too big. I mean, the web is its still there, so it can burn him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still... I'll give you that. I'll give you that. How big is the web again? It's like... Ten foot by ten foot, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'll just put it here. There we go. Um. Okay, that's Elsa's turn over. Macross turn. Yep, it is Macross turn. Macro hits thing with hammer. A uh, kopesh, I guess. That's a hit. Obviously. Yeah, I know. I just couldn't go further because Spook was there, and it d doesn't matter anyway. Okay. Yeah, they're they're good solid hits. And uh, you're taking chunks of this magical energy out, but like I said, you can see the energy pulling back together. Uh, yeah. Um, is that like all of it, or just a bit? Yeah, every single wound you've inflicted so far. That's completely healed? Not completely, but the ones that you started dealing last round seem to be... Except for the Hellish Rebuke, which has left like a big mark on its shoulder and chunk out of it. The rest seem to be healing quite well. So maybe it's like a threshold, we're not hitting high enough, I don't know. All right. uh, at the end of Macross' turn, it brings the hand up in the air and launches down and cracks Macro across the face for a solid hit of 32. Reduce about half, so 16. And then we're over to Lanieros. No, Macro hits him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, yeah, solid, solid hit. And <clears throat> I'll shout to uh, Makra to go for the uh, tendrils at the back and try and rip one more out with my Bigby's hands as a bonus action. Yep. 27. Yep, you managed to rip one out. And just because I can, I'll firebolt him in the face. But uh, that still hits right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so big, it's difficult to miss him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I missed size modifiers to AC. <laughs> he, Minus yeah, 15. But, yeah, alright, so at the end of Lanieros' turn, he begins to cast a spell, bringing his hands together. Oh no, and Chester can't hear. <laughs> oh, give me one sec. Oh yeah, we've got Lanieros now. I'm within 60 feet of the outside of his shape. I'm not sure if that counts. It it, it kind of does. Okay. Uh, I'll counter spell. Alright. Oh, oh, as third level? Yeah. Can you make a uh, intelligence check? Yeah. Balls. Okay. It fails. Can uh, Xerxil make... <laughs> One moment. Make a uh, no, 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 no. Don't change it from charisma because you know no. I've got my charisma. It's, it's an intelligence save. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> it is! <laughs> I'll spend an inspiration. And then <laughs> still <laughs> fail miserably. Is it even worth to use the fucking. Probably not. You could use your legendary save. But you, legendary. oh no, you can't, you've already rolled. What legendary save? The rules that we spoke about last week. I told you about them. They're right there in the inspiration. Oh yeah, alright, well we got them. I, mean, right, I think so you could still use it since you always choose to pass after you No, fail, but right? this is different. This is a. Uh, you spend two inspiration points to automatically pass a save and throw before rolling. Ah. So you don't lame like that. You are feeble minded. Your Charisma Intelligence dropped to 1. Cool. And you also take... Didn't roll that for me. 13 Psychic Damage. That was at the end of my turn, or that was on his turn? That was at the end of your turn. Mean. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> All right, so Zexo. <laughs> he licks the war machine. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? The one that's next well, The war machine. Oh, the war machine. Oh, oh. It is the death machine. I can't, <laughs> my you don't have much intelligence. I'll let you... It looks <laughs> like... He, he might just be able to understand what means in this case. Alright, so... Does, uh... I'm assuming Spook just kind of stands there then, he can't get any orders from you, can he? Um, that depends on... what did I do last round? You did order him to attack. Then he continues attacking until it's changed. Alright, go ahead. Ooh. Good hit. 21 damage is quite a lot. Mm. Like I said, and he's... that's reducing his max HP by 21 again as well. Yep, yep. He slides through, wow. grabs... Grabs hold of the magical energies, he wins, throwing it to the ground. All sloppy. Alright, so I guess it's Chester's turn, but I don't know if he can hear us. No, uh, I can hear Chester. <laughs> it's your, you could try re-logging once but it's your I'm turn. Really... Did you hear what I said about the video, Todd? Really struggling. Probably not. Uh, well, I'm on an iPad at the moment, so I'm going to switch in a second after this round to my laptop and see if that helps. Uh, I will fire off a, uh, how are we looking for health? You are looking apart bad. From, apart from you, pretty okay. Is you want to try to cure Zerxel if you can. I'm just, I can't hear anyone, so fountain of turbulent juice. And hit okay. everyone with 20. That's cool. Yeah, everyone gets healed for 20, including Chester. I'm going to not do anything else and try and work out the thing. Whoa! <laughs> so he's got a quote on amazing. The, the big plays. Oh, what's going on? It's Rocket called him. Yeah. yeah. Alright, okay, so we can move on. Chester's had his turn. He's cured some people's health. Alright, so initiative count 20, which I don't know if you've recognised yet or not, is actually his initiative. I just wanted to make it seem like he was getting layer actions. Oh, they don't restore. I think that's just Todd fixing to uh, jump into his design of that. So. Yep, that's fine. We'll, we'll move on. Okay, uh, he... I guess he just goes for more attacks against Macra because he can't restore his goddamn abilities. Yeah, he brings the oh, fist. Yeah, I was just doing technical support. Yeah, that's right. And he thumps Macra and then uppercuts him. Can Mac Macra takes thirty-seven damage, bludgeoning? Yeah, it is about half. And then he summons one of the orbs in his hand and hurls it towards Laneros. It's a good solid hit, unless you want to do anything about it. Well, if it looks like it's going to hit, then uh, I would like to do something, but I already tried counterspelling, so... Oh, and then it strikes you for a total of 28 force damage. Yeah, AC is 19, you're aware, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rolled okay. much higher than that. Yeah, okay. 27, <laughs> you said. Did I? Yeah, 20, 28. 28, sorry. Yeah. Um. However, when it... When it kind of detonates near you, this ball of energy, you notice it blows the uh, orb in front of you. Okay. And that just falls off the edge. Alright. Uh, so does that do anything else bad? Like explode all over me? Oh, you've got okay? high passive perception, haven't you? So I, will I do. There you go. All right, so Elzef, you're up. Um, well, the death machine is gonna shoot at the cables if it can. Yep. Uh, no, he's he's creating full cover for the cables unless it gets round. Oh, okay, okay. I guess in that case, uh, the death machine shoots him. All right. Yep. But you know what goes around cover famously? Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> Are you aiming it particularly at the objects at the back? Yeah. All right, yeah, that's a solid hit. You destroy... Yeah, you, you managed to destroy one of them. 
And since the fireball would also hit the web, he takes, what is it, 2d4, right? 2d4 fire damage. Extra. Okay. So he takes 7 damage. As the webs burn away, that didn't do anything because my DM is cruel. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> now, El Elzef. It brings up the other hand. Instead of the black Im the black force ball, summons a white one. And then skims it across the ground as he hurls it towards you. Do you want to do anything about it? Uh, is it a, does it look like an attack? Oh, yeah, it's a ranged attack. You saw him just use one on Lanyros, and it struck him and exploded at the impact. Oh, yeah, sure, I still have a lot of uses of shield. What's, what does that make your AC? Uh, shit, shit high. Let's look. Um, 28. Oh, fuck, mate, yeah, that misses. It rebounds, <laughs> off of the, rebounds off of the force field and, and shatters against one of the masks. Artificers, bro. <laughs> yep. All right, Laneros, your turn. Did you skip Macro's turn? Oh, yeah, you skipped Macro's turn. Yeah, Macro, you're, you're up, Macro. Macro hits thing with hammer. Hit thing I... at the back with hammer, as I said last turn. <laughs> but aren't they, like, up in the air? Could he go there and hit them? He could, I... yeah. Oh, well, yeah, in that case, he does that. I, I thought they'd be, like, up at the back and up really high. And I didn't no, want no, 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 you can run around the platform and just go around. Well, I, I, again, I thought they'd come, like, from up and he'd have to do acrobatics or some shit. I didn't want to figure that out with his sheet. No, there's, like, there's like tons there. Why well, he hits them with his hammer. Kopesh. Right. All right. It's, well, both hits, yeah? Yeah. Five. All right, cool, yeah. It, he manages to cut through two of them. I'm gonna look at macro go. I, I I end Curtis's turn. All right. Okay. At the end of the round, he begins casting a spell. Anyone? No. All right. Oh, uh, Chester could try and counter spell it. Chester counter spells it. Oh, uh, does he now? Top will do it if he goes here. <laughs> I, I definitely heard Counterspell in there. Yeah, I, that's what he said. Israel. No. Wow, he sounds like a Dalek. What the fuck? Can you, can you just say exterminate for us, please? <laughs> what sort of vector pod are you, Rocket? This is worse. Oh, so good. I think now it's the other way around. You can hear us, but we can't hear him anymore. Uh. Yeah, I heard Counter Spell! Yeah, you need a Charisma check! It's a high level spell. <laughs> can't do anything! What the? So good! Do you want to roll a then, please? He hasn't even clicked off his spells. So he can't do anything, so can you roll it for him? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. I've clicked it. Okay. I am Chester. <laughs> I have come to bargain. Right. <laughs> oh my god, he got exactly what he needed! Jeez! So as this thing tries to cast Force Cage on Lanyros, uh, as the cage is about to form right. round him, uh, Chester throws up a counter spell and he just shatters like glass in front of you, turns Ethereal and passes right through you, Lanyros, and shatters against the far wall. You're like, oof. That was close. Indeed. Alright, now it is your turn, Lanyros. Uh, uh, Alright, so first of all, Bigby's hand again. Yep. For yeah, 21? You, you keep getting, like... Yeah, good rolls there. Yeah. Uh, and then I will um, do what I think makes sense and dispel magic on the cube that's um, like furthest in my line away from me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. This one? Yeah. All right. So, can you make a intelligence check? Yeah. Twenty-four. Oh. And as you do, and you dispel it, the fire inside doo -doo, peters out, it hits the ground, smashes into rock, and you hear the giant image go <laughs> as he's moving slower and slower. 
Alright, at the end of your turn, it turns round, brings its hand up, and then just does a pile driver, basically, a pile driver punch straight at Macra. Um, can Macra make a strength saving throw, please? He is shit. I am Macra, I, I yeah. realise this. Nope, he saves. Yeah, but he also takes 55 bludgeoning damage from that attack. Oh, but that's halved, yeah? Yeah, it's halved, of course, yeah. So you still need to halve it, is what he's saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I ain't halving it for you. I'd half it for Curtis, because it's Curtis, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's... Uh, that, took, that took two actions, so I guess that's the end of that. Xerxeal. Licks the floor. And oh, I, shit, I forgot to do it. Sorry, Zerks, I forgot to dispel magic you. Yeah, I know, I was like... I tuned as much, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah I, I, have have mind last one. I can't, I can't yeah. interrupt. This is speed at the moment. That's, that's, a, that's a good strike, as you know. It hits. It fails his constitution saving throw. Alright. <laughs> that's me. Oh, it's I mean, got a... No difference really from a normal turn then, is it? No, I mean... well, it's Chester's turn, but he's not here. So can you type what you want to do, and we'll we'll uh... or text. We'll say that, and he's gone. That's that's Todd gone again. Hello, Todd, speak to me. Do you remember Void Hot when he had like an actual okay connection and could actually play? I don't know what is what is uh, people with tech issues at last though. So you now what I hate the UK. <laughs> oh okay. Nice <laughs> 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 I'm, so. I'm gonna have Chester cast healing. <clears throat> Another fountain of turbulent juice goes off, healing everyone. Can't Chester, like, fix Zerxel? Just, like, in general? Just he he have... could do, but do you think he would? No, I don't think Todd would, but I'm <laughs> saying we could use this chance to do so. I'm gonna put in uh, Chester's HP. Alright, thank you. Until he gets back, I mean... I just gotta do what I gotta do. Alright, so, in, on its turn... It's got three abilities on charge now, and I bet he rolls none of them. None of them. Yay. <laughs> Alright, so... I guess it makes multiple attacks. It goes for one punch against Macra. Which now with all of those fucking cables and those orbs taken out, it misses feebly. It's so slow that as it swings towards Macra, he manages to easily dodge out of the way. However, it does manage to throw one of those orbs all the way at Elzef. Flings over and goes to strike you. Against 23 AC? Wait, yeah. Elsa hasn't had her turn yet, so that's still 28. Oh, is it? Yeah. You mother fucking 27. Yeah, it strikes the shield and bounces off. Artificer. All right, Elzef, <laughs> it's your turn. Death machine goes brrrr. <laughs> He's back. Is he? Probably it's for 12, not. I think. Yeah. Um, right, so... um, I'm gonna have to look at the range of stuff. Oh yeah, Arkwalt has 90 feet of range. Yep, um, and you notice that the healing is slowing down. There doesn't seem to be much of it anymore. Okay, now we come to the one niche usage of Arkwalt. Because it jumps. So the first one is gonna hit the God King. Yep. And then, my dear friend, it jumps to the cables! Yeah! Good hit. Does it hit again? It. Goes to the next scale. They seem damaged, but not enough to completely break the last two. Okay. Uh, and that's also have turn over. All right. It brings its hands up and flings another one of those orbs at Elzeth. Looks like it's going to hit. <laughs> I'll let this one hit. All right. It crits you for 92 damage. Who are you, Arna? <laughs> <laughs> 92 damage. Oh, look at 92 that. force. Yeah, in hoping... case I wanted to reduce it. I was, oh, hoping, you, I was hoping you'd be like, I oh, shield. I'd be like, hey. 
No, I thought I could let me. one hit me, but apparently over there is the major of yeah. rock damage town. Macro, it's your turn. That's you again, I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> well, Macro, who has not taken 92 force <laughs> damage, it's the fucking cables with his hammer. Sorry. <laughs> Dush. Yep. I and didn't then say recklessly, so this isn't reckless. Cuts through the last two cables. The thing lets out as it slumps forward onto the onto the ground, and then just kind of fades. Wunderbar, Macra and system. All right, Lanieros. I guess he moves to the front again. Uh, what the, describe and kind of fades. Kind of fades, as in he's shimmering in and out of existence. Hmm. What does okay. kind of fate mean? Like, I have a lamp in my living room, and if you press yeah, the button for longer, it dims it's, down. It's half, it... half dimmed to what it was. Okay, but it's still, like, on. Yeah. It's still sure. you, okay. you can see that it's no longer regenerating. Okay, uh, move the Bigby's hand over to the cube that's in front of me, and crush right. it. Alright, make, make an attack roll, actually. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking... Oh, let me read the spell. It does 48 force damage, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah I was just thinking whether it should grab it and just try and break it. Um, it's with my attack rolls, this one, so I'll just roll a firebolt and then roll the damage. So an 18. Yep, that's it. For 13 force damage. Yep, 10 is enough, and it cracks it, and the thing begins. <laughs> Letting out a growl. And then noticing that actually punching them works, I'll firebolt the one to the... Uh, no, actually, never mind. I'll cast a spell magic at level 6 on Xerxel. Yep, but that I works. But I think I still, still need to roll or not? Well, Feeble Mind is level 7, right? So yeah, you do need to roll. Hmm, bugger. Would I have recognized Feeble Mind? Uh, make an Arcana check. Feeble Mind is level 8. No, it's not. Why are you? Oh, oh you're right. Sorry. Thank you. You are right. Because yeah, I, sorry. I'm thinking of the force cage that I tried to cast. Yeah, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, so you recognise it for sure. As... Okay. Then I'll just cast that fourth because I have no third level spells left. Because I know that it's not going to help to cast that six Then. All right. You know I know you need inspiration. To yeah, you may. Fucking bullshit. All right. So you go to cast a spell magic on Xerxes, and he opens his mouth and just absorbs all the energy into his gullet. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> Jesus. All right. <laughs> oh no! What if you've dispelled Zerxel's magical color that enables them to eat anything? <laughs> Was Zerxel. that how it worked? Zerxel, you're up. Floor licking, <laughs> life frolicking. Oh, not frolicking, floor licking. Either we're done with the floor licking. <laughs> hey, so. As it's laying on the ground, how does Xerxel kill it? Oh, <laughs> You've done a lot of damage to actually bypass the regeneration. So, but, like, as Lanieros was destroying the um, orbs, it was taking 150 damage each each orb. So, you managed to get it down just enough for Xerxel to... <laughs> Well, Xerxel doesn't kill it in the slightest. He just carries on licking the floor, but Spook <laughs> mindlessly rips its soul from his body in a necrotic rage. <laughs> and as, it, do and as it does, for ages. it goes full, full god of war and, like, rears up to yell and scream in its, like, agony. And Spook goes with it, flies up in the air, and then slams down on its forehead as he rips apart the metal mask on top, peels it back to reveal, like, a muscular arcane face and then grabs the side of its head and pushes its necrotic thumbs into the side of his eyes and there's like a roar as they pop arcane juices go flying everywhere and it just roars and fades back into the um, blue kind of magic which fades and then Spook does a superhero landing right next to Xerxel how's that? sounds amazing <laughs> and just... well wait 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 I want to I wanna drag this out a little bit I'm going to end the session there but I'm gonna say it. You all get a level up. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just discuss that Xerxel has finally slain the God King, but he was too stupid to comprehend? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? 
<laughs> the God King? That was just its clone. But it already killed the God King. Yeah, and then he woke up in his other clone, cast clone again, and then fucked off. Oh my fucking god, are we doing- <laughs> Are we gonna fight the God King a third you, time? Wait, the, the mother of Dawn told you, right? He woke up in his clone- Yeah, that's why I was surprised we found this one here! Yeah, and then he cast clone again, and, and then was like, I'll wait for it to mature before <clears> I do anything, but you guys found out where he was, so he fucked off. Or I could open Jeremy Crawford's Twitter. We're gonna send him angry tweets for designing oh, about, the clone. About, about, about the smell of clone. We'll send tweets to right, Jeremy Crawford. We will be back next week to see what the guys do. But they have found the clone and destroyed it. That is what matters.